It was when I was in so much pain that I had to crawl across the floor that I realized I was happier without him. I'd rather crawl across the floor on my hands and knees. It was no longer his responsibility to pay for my medical bills, food, gas, or anything. He put a down payment on a car for me so that I had a mode of transportation and claimed it was a Christmas gift. He expects me to make monthly payments on the car by donating plasma twice a week until the $12,000 debt was paid off. So I began donating my blood for weeks until I was a and that's how I paid for my pain medication and food and gas, because our joint bank account was constantly overdrawn! <laughs> So I found out that if you put these two videos together and this song, it's actually like a totally watchable video. All right. I guess Keffels is coming off the end of the previous drama. We've been covering this for like a month now. The tipster Keffels Vosh situation. If you guys don't know, Keffels was starting a YouTube channel to talk about true crime like every other morally, not morally, sorry. Well, I guess morally too. It's a true crime channel, but every other like content bankrupt channel who has literally nothing to provide the universe just makes a video making the 50th video on the cold case file of the person that everyone knows about because they watch 50 other true crime videos. So it's going to flop. Yeah, it's probably flopped before it got started. In fact, she was, she was tweeting, I'm not doing drama anymore. And like 12 hours later was the Vosh situation. So she's abandoned that channel almost immediately. And I believe finally gone back to go through it. But um, I do have, uh, I do want to hear from Keffels here. Cause this is, this is a, a big moment for her. Guys, listen, she can't do it anymore. She's been blown the f out for a month straight. She's dived it. She died on Lolly Hill. She can't do it anymore. Hey everyone, um, if you've been wondering why you haven't been seeing me on camera recently, it's because I've been going through kind of a dark time. It's it's been no, not be a dark time. And to talk about things, but I kind of just want to lay it all out there. If you're unaware, this is the year anniversary, just a bit over a week now of everything that happened last year. <laughs> yeah, when yeah, I you know. <laughs> Guys, in case you didn't know, chat, it's the one year anniversary of everything that happened last year. Oh, she's got away with words, chat. It's the one year anniversary of 2023. Uh, of March 3rd, 2023. Oh no, chat. Oh no. Not, ah, oh, don't, don't you hate when it's the year anniversary of March 3rd, 2023? Thank you for updating. We weren't gonna, we weren't sure. Uh, we weren't sure, chat. <laughs> Better read them. Where do I donate? <laughs> Where can I donate to stop the trauma? Everything that happened last year of when I had to go to rehab. And I know- I Oh no, chat, wait, life. chat. Do you remember why Keffels announced she went to rehab? She's like, after my debate with Keemstar. Can somebody find this? Apparently we debated her into rehab. Like the stream that I did with her was like her bo like bottom of the barrel moment where she realized she needed to get help. Like after she did a live stream with me and Keemstar, she literally like checked herself into fucking rehab. That's in her story. Does anyone have this? I don't have this chat. I need to find this real quick. I, I didn't know this was going to come up. But literally, I spoke to her on stream, and she's like, God, my life can't get any worse than it was tonight. And she literally checked into rehab. Um, is it has, has she deleted the video? This video? She deletes everything, so I'm, I wouldn't be shocked if she's deleted this video. Uh, by the way, that was, like, real ear rapey. I can't do this anymore five months ago. It would be a year ago now. Uh, 10 months ago, my struggle with addiction. Is, is that it? I have, I'm, I'm a little nervous. I've got a lot of serious stuff to talk about today. No, it was like another suicide type video. All right, we'll just keep going. It was another suicide archetype video. Jokes for having to go to rehab. But the honest truth about that was I was in an incredibly dark place. I was so close to losing my life last year because I did not want to be alive anymore and I was doing every drug that I could find in order to numb that pain, in order to make that feeling go But away. the GoFundMe money is safe! I didn't feel like there was any hope. It's safe in a future. folder! And when I was in rehab, I, I proposed to a girl. She lived in Ireland and I made the decision to move here. And now I call Ireland my home and I was you really can have her, Ireland! Opportunity, not only because 
I love her deeply, but because I wanted a fresh start. I wanted to get away from all of the horrible memories, all of the shattered hopes and broken dreams that I associate with my hometown. No! And I took that opportunity. And I'm really fortunate to call Ireland my home. It's a beautiful country, but this has been an incredibly hard anniversary for me. And this isn't related at all, by the way, to any of the drama. Like this, this has nothing to do with Bosch or Ethan Klein. Like Bosch fucked up. I'm not defending him. He can defend himself on the ways that he messed up. She finally took and the I'm advice, sure Ethan chat. Klein is currently in some sort of drama because he mocks he mocks someone who set themselves on fire. W! I, I honestly haven't been keeping up. I w, Ethan Klein! I'm, I'm making this video because, like, I don't like not being authentic. I don't like not being real. With Listen, hold on, audience. pause, pause. I want to speak on Aaron Hernandez really quickly. People have been asking me on Twitter, Nick, I know you're the host of Ultimate Rape Review, but what do you what do you think about Aaron Hernandez? Okay? And this is my this is my per this is my take on Aaron, okay? As someone who fucking hates when people on Twitter ask retarded YouTubers like myself what their opinions are on like super like hot button political issues about foreign conflicts i don't understand like i don't look up israel in my in my daily life if i give you a take on israel it's because i've sat down and looked it up because some dumb fuck on twitter has asked me about it and i need, feel like i need to engage with it. i'm not doing that anymore all right so my take on aaron hernandez is that uh people are like oh i disavow i disavow oh, i'm garbage school but i disavow i can't i can't support something like that i understand why he did it but i can't support it well you know what listen and i'm gonna say something very similar because of youtube tos but trust me i don't believe it uh i my my god's honest opinion on this situation is like if, if <laughs> i think he raised the bar chat you know how many streamers say, oh, I support Palestine, I support Israel, oh, okay, but nobody's doing what Aaron Hernandez did. No, they're just sitting on stream, they're like, oh, you don't support Palestine enough, you don't support Israel enough. Well, guess what, motherfucker? Aaron Hernandez went out there and showed people how much he supported Israel, okay? Oh, I can't support that, I can't support that. Well, if everyone else was showing their support for Israel and Palestine the way Aaron Hernandez did, then my timeline wouldn't be asking me about, Oh, what do you, what do you think about Israel and Palestine? What do you think about it? Yeah, you know what I think about it? I, I don't think about it. That's why, because I, I, I don't think about it. That's my answer to you. So, um, fucking Aaron Hernandez W. Okay, we're gonna keep going. I've always hated being inauthentic. I've always hated hiding who I am. And the risk that I run by being vulnerable like this, because I know the moment this video is going to go out, I am going to be relentlessly mocked. Go check the comment section. <laughs> Somebody just said, isn't Aaron Hernandez dead? Yeah, but so is Aaron Bush now. What's the difference? I mean, I, who knows? Who cares? Hated hiding who I am. And the risk that I run by being vulnerable like this, because I know the moment this video is going to go out, I am going to be relentlessly mocked. Go check the comment section. Like, as soon as this video goes out, fuck, give it a like too, if this means something to you. Because I appreciate, I appreciate every single person who I have helped in any way throughout all the years I've been a content creator. I have suffered. Chat, we got to check the comments. Check the comments, chat. What are we gonna find if I scroll down? Oh no. Hold on, wait. <laughs> Where is it? It's gotta be here, chat. It's gotta be here, chat. Where is it? Oh no. Has it been deleted? Am I blocked? No way. I saw it on Twitter. I was hoping it would be here. I, she said to check the comments. Oh, this is so sad, bro. This is so sad. I'm gonna have to pull it up. Oh man, we gotta find this. Chris the Narc, where are you? Chris, Chris the Narc, where are you? I'm so genuinely sorry that you've had to endure so much. As your friend, all I want for you more than anything is for you to be happy. I hope you can find whatever it is that brings you joy, and I'm here to support you, no matter how hard it gets. Please take care of yourself. I'm here if you need me. <laughs> so much in the last several years of doing this. 
I have been doxxed, I have been swatted, I have been hacked. I've had people show up outside of my house. Oh! It has been... It has been hell, but it has been so rewarding. And I don't want to ever have to stop just because people give me a hard time. Because I know... I know that I'm making a difference. And I know that a lot of people respect me. For no, all you're not! You're not making a difference! You don't do anything! You're an online grifter with literally no positions! Uh, you can't even hold a position on me! You called me a fascist a couple of months ago, and you got Discord DMs where you're like, Alright, listen, Nick might be a dummy, but he's actually a content machine! So you support the- You're literally rubbing hands with fascists, Keffles! What's going on? What's going on? Why are you complimenting fascists, bro? That's crazy, dude. That's insane! Uh... Throughout all of my fuck-ups. Throughout all of the bad decisions that I've made. And I don't think I- WHERE'S THE MONEY?! Of course I've made mistakes. WHERE'S THE MONEY?! <laughs> but I'll always do my best to own that. I'll always do my best to try to be better. And part of that is transparency. And just saying where I'm at right now. And saying- Be transparent, Keffles! WHERE'S THE, the MONEY?! Of my channel? And my content in general? And how I want to change- HOW WAS IT SPENT?! With my audience. WHERE ARE THE LOGS?! There's gonna be, there's gonna be some changes. WHAT I, STREAMING I EQUIPMENT DID YOU BUY WITH THE LAWSUIT MONEY?! <laughs> I live stream anymore. I... For the foreseeable future, I just can't do it anymore. Live streaming is honestly, I think, made me a... She's gonna stream next week, chat! She's literally gonna stream next week. This is so ridiculous. I'm not gonna live stream anymore. I'm not gonna do this anymore. I can't. I just can't do it. Wait. Wait, what is that? Is that money? Is that money? Is that a social opportunity? Can I throw myself in front of something else? Oh, I'm going live. First person? I think like <laughs> the live streaming environment has made Is that crack? Like <laughs> me paranoid because it is it is a format where people have unlimited access oh to troll and harass you and you can only take so much of that before it gets under your skin and i've always i've also felt like i've i've been stuck in this cycle of just endlessly churning out slop that i'm not even proud of you know it's just stuff that i churn out slop all the time and boy am i fucking proud chat what in the chat if you like you are our slop within a day or two no one cares about it just comes and goes so quickly that none of it feels meaningful and a lot of it doesn't feel like it has any rewatch value at all and i really want to make stuff that has more meaning than that i want to be able to put more thought i want to talk about doing. dead children yeah. bro can we talk about this stop 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 the music stop the music Every one of you fuckers are clowns, bro. All of you people are like, I don't want to do any more drama. I don't want any more drama. Drama's bad. I'm gonna do more positive things. I want. They start a true crime channel and they talk about dead fucking kids every single time. Oh, drama's so toxic. You guys are really fucking. Oh, I don't want to talk about stuff like that. It's really toxic. And then they talk about how a guy murdered children. Is this like is this not like a huge hypocrisy to anyone else? Does that not like drive you fucking insane when you hear these YouTubers sit here and grandstand about shit like this? Like, oh, look at me, I, I, I'm, so, I'm so against stuff like this, and then all of a sudden they're like, yeah, dude, uh, we're gonna we're gonna read the Dead Kid Manifesto day three. <laughs> it makes me less money, even if I get less. Don't say it's a Jewish voice. Fuck you, you're gonna be in trouble. I'm doing garbage goober from Rook and Morty views for doing it i want to be fulfilled in what i'm doing i have this channel that you're all watching this video on right now and i'm gonna be putting short form and long form videos. that's kyle's on cousin it. kind of maybe all right now like i hear this, it now i hear it if you want me to just let me know in the comments because i have no idea what i'm doing honestly i don't I know, know what i'm doing to change uh, i'm gonna be seeing a psychiatrist oh guys chat dude chat this is my favorite buzzword hey i'm in the i'm in a corner right now my life is over my career is dead i've done really stupid things uh in this case keffels died on lolly hill but don't worry chat i'm gonna see a therapist and if you're ever expecting me to explain what i learned in it or talk about my experiences or confirm in any way that i've gone to a, psychi a psychiatrist at any point in my entire life i'm never going to acknowledge it but listen listen i'm getting help okay i'm getting help chat
Uh, and there is no checks and balances on this. You have to accept it. You have to accept that I'm going to therapy. That, that's every YouTube drama, bro. I had a situation um, when I moved here that the antidepressant that I was on for a really long time, it wasn't approved. Bro, Vivance! Isn't that a de antidepressant? Ireland, and I had to be taken off it. And now that I'm in a depressive episode again, I realize I need help, so... I'm going to be seeing a I realize I need help, so the first thing I thought is, shit, son, I got to make a YouTube video about it. I just pretty soon to deal with that and to be, try to feel okay again. Five it's ants is a stimulant? Well, the, le the, the best way to not be depressed is to be stimulated, so. It's going to be a bit of a journey, but I know I'm going to be okay. I have a lot of people who care about me, and... <laughs> Dude, the best antidepressant is protein. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to get swole. I'm starting to feel like I have a sense of hope again. As for my live channel, I'm gonna keep it to um, shorts. If I do go shorts? back to- Shorts? Bro, you don't talk fast enough to make shorts. Your shorts are gonna be three words. What are you talking about, chat? Live streaming. And I'm still working on Scared Awake. I'm still gonna be releasing a video every two weeks. It, I'll leave it in the description if you wanna subscribe. It's not going to be everyone's cup of tea, but horror content has always been like a really big special interest of mine. She's making horror content? Is that what I did? I, is she making horror content? Damn, that's crazy. And if I can get that off the ground, that would be really cool. I'm just going to keep chipping away. Dude, Canadians cannot say the word horror, bro. You can hear the Canadian accent. It just sounds like she's making horror content. Did Keffels quit again? Cecil! Cecil, it's the 15th suicide upload by Keffels. She's quit again. She's done with drama chat. It's so over. I don't know what she's going to do. Because <laughs> if it does get off the ground and I can make that work, that's awesome. And if it doesn't, it's more I'm, content. <laughs> yeah, dude. I'm enjoying doing it. And that's what matters. Being able to create stuff and put stuff out in the world that matters means a lot to me. Okay, well, <laughs> luckily for you, that's never going to happen. So um, I don't think you're ever going to contribute positively to the world. Being... <sighs> Being vulnerable like this is honestly terrifying. No, it's not, because you're going to sympathy bait. Everyone's going to be like, Oh, careful, you're doing so good, careful. You don't understand. You have so much value. But I really want to be. I really appreciate being able to be this vulnerable. I've never tried to hide the fact from my audience. I've been pretty transparent. I've always struggled with- Where's the money, Keffels? Where's the money, Keffels? I'm so transparent, but I won't tell you where the money is. Mental health issues. I've been diagnosed with- Everyone's got mental health issues, especially- Oh god. I don't know, bro. Especially leftist streamers, bro. Holy shit. ADHD. All the bread tubers are a melting pot for mental illness. D. PTSD, major depressive disorder. I've tried to take my own life before. I've been in psychiatric hospitals. I went to rehab. Uh, multiple members of my family also took their own lives. And there uh, are people when they see me- Hold on, I'm sorry. No, all right, that was kind of fucked up to mock. Uh, at least to do it without music, sorry. Disorder. I've tried to take my own life before. I've been in psychiatric hospitals. I went to rehab. Uh, multiple members of my family also took their own lives and there are people when they see me talk about this stuff they mock me for it but honestly i think it takes strength to speak openly it takes about strength to end the fucking lolly drama by telling everyone what a massive victim i am and what how everyone in my life kills themselves to get away from me oh fuck it takes such such power truth to power because the alternative is that you don't and Personally, I know a lot of people who would still be in this world today and would still be in my life if they talked about it. Is anyone else just so, angry? Does this make anyone else mad that like Keffel's just ended a month long of self-imposed drama that she blamed every other? All right, we're memeing right now, but I'm going to be honest because I mean, it just seems mean if I don't give the context. All right. Keffel's just embarked on a single month tear of some of the dumbest drama ever that is entirely her own fault, in which I've literally told her directly it is entirely her fault, right? Uh, and you'll see more of that soon. But this is all her fault. She dives in to try to defend Vosh, makes things worse for him, uh, probably would have been better for Vosh to come out and just disavow Tipster and Keffels in general. And then she blames Ethan Klein, 
okay, for making this all about her when she injected herself into the conflict. And then, after everyone starts to finally forget about all the stupid shit she caused for herself, right, then she comes out and she starts talking about suicide. All right, oh, I'm so depressed. Oh, I'm uh, my family's fucking, uh, there's people in my family who've died or all this stuff. And it's just like, fuck you, dude. Like, holy sh- I, I can't, I can't do it with her. I, I don't- it's just such a transparent fucking grift, and it's disgusting, and it pisses me off to listen to. Am I wrong? Does this fucking drive anyone else crazy? This is like, she didn't even have to do this. She could have just walked off and kept doing everything, but she had to cash in on the, oh, feel bad for me, sympathy card. Oh, and now and everyone talks about this. Oh, I can turn around and be like, look how heartless Nick was. Well, I don't care, bro. Right foot creep, dude. Look at this. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah, I don't give a fuck, bro. I don't give a shit. Call me whatever you want. It doesn't matter to me, bro. Fuck off. Thank you for giving me that opportunity. You are welcome. Oh, fuck, bro. I do not care. I will own it. Chat, we got we got more. Chat, the pin comment. My God, bro. Like, why? Why are you doing this to us? Why are you making this so easy? Look at this. Look at this pin comment, chat. All right? This is so bad. If I could ever find it, look at YouTube, bro. It's so good, bro. Do, does anyone else like YouTube? Is anyone else a big fan of YouTube? I'm going to get to the comment section. I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. Okay, I'm going to start scrolling. Where is the co oh, okay, here it is. I feel like I'm inevitably going to get the- Why do you talk so slow? Okay, we're finally going to find out, chat, why the quartering talks so slow. Okay. One of the symptoms for depression that I experience is called psychomotor retardation. Which causes my emotional and physical reactions to slow down. If you've experienced this chat, there is help for it. Psychomotor retardation chat. She is psychomotor retarded. She gets so sad she can't speak correctly. I don't like why why are you like this <laughs> what is going on oh god it's so over I, you couldn't waterboard that information out of me that's a good fucking one chase holy shit chat chat my name is nicholas diorio okay we have two thousand people in here that was the undercard we have two main events coming it's a double header it's a double header on tonight's show Thank you so much to everyone who's been super supportive. Uh, our last stream was the birthday stream with Lav, and that was a fucking a meteoric fucking live stream. I think that's probably the most donations I've ever seen in my life. Uh, you guys have been super duper supportive. I took a week off. I've been doing a bunch of other shit. Uh, let me just give you a short life update before we get to the main topics. Um, bought a pinball machine. Uh, probably not a surprise to most. I'm, I'm sure most of you guys are, uh, are aware uh, that this was happening. Um, <laughs> of course it was. Uh, because that's, because I'm fucking retarded, but that's what I do, is I buy fucking pinball machines. Um, oh, is this tweet bad? Is this, is this a bad tweet? Am I getting a cancel? I, I sent an optics check, but nobody got back to me. Is this a bad tweet? I just, I don't know. Guys, if you're not following Real Bunty King, that's my private, it's a public account. But, like, I mean, I don't care if you screenshot anything from it. But, um, yeah, no, I mean, like... Uh, I mean, yeah, I don't care. It's just like a chiller. What I talk about like community related drama in here and share like life updates and stuff if you're interested. Oh, this is what I was going to play during the Frogan section. I'll play it now. I don't think it's that bad. <laughs> I was going to play this. 
شبكة الأمجاد الإسلامية. Wait, why is it in English? Wait, I didn't know they made these in English. No, hold on. Real, hold on. Dude, I'm telling you, bro. I'm bopping. Ayo, K911. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. That's a fire beat. Honestly, I need to stop the show because someone just made a donation. Uh, so for Ayala's birthday, uh, her partner and some friends organized a huge gangbang with 42 attendants. Here's a breakdown of how the event was organized and an exit survey and what it was like. So apparently there was a guy with a clipboard uh, taking, like looking at the, um, the, the loads that were blasted into her, okay? And they were taking notes on this. So Ayala went to Twitter to tell everyone, 4,000 likes on this tweet, that 1,600 people responded to the survey and wanted to gangbang her. Um, 828 failed the auto filter. Uh, 328 were denied straight away. Probably too ugly. Uh, 448 passed the manual filter and 776 also passed the auto filter. Uh, but 197 of those didn't return, like getting, didn't get uh, contact from Ayala or her, uh, loving partner. Um, and they contacted 251 people to gangbang her. Okay. They interviewed 83 of them. 25 of them were friends, so they didn't, like, they're, you know, they're gangbang friends, so they were just allowed to be there. Uh, and 143 didn't respond. Uh, 31 people didn't get the golden ticket to gangbang Ayala. Uh, but 56 did. 13 canceled because they went, wait, why the fuck am I doing this? Uh, 41 did the STI test. One guy did not show his test results, so he had AIDS. Uh, 42 showed up. 37 of the 42 penetrated Ayala. I guess the others couldn't get hard in the chaos. I think that was what she said down below. Uh, 17 of them came in her. Uh, five came in a fluffer. Uh, is, I'm assuming that's a, a tissue. Um, and 15 didn't come during the, the carnage. Uh, so this is uh, somebody who spoke to Mr. Girl on stream a few times in Destiny. So if you were wondering, what do you mean, dude? It's fucking... Well, this was all consensual. It wasn't... <laughs> So if you were just wondering about Ayala's gangbang, um, yeah, I want to shout out the lab that was able to run this much STI testing. <laughs> Bro, this shit's crazy. I'm curious, how was some of this data collected? Was someone there with a clipboard noting where the loads went? Yes, actually. 40% failure rate. To be fair, each guy had a maximum of three minutes, which is too short. Like, what is happening? Wait, so you're telling me you made 17 people come in three minutes? This is insane. This is cra Why are these people saying this stuff? Why has this not been bullied out of society? Why is this allowed? I don't care. I, don't, I just don't understand why people think they can post this stuff. Uh, a clipboard. The clipboard cock was watching. Oh, we are we are kink shaming. We are kink shaming, chat. We are kink shamers, okay? Um, Trippy Sausage, $5. It was nice to Kevil list all the reasons why nobody should listen to anything she says. I bully bullies with 20 sec. Thank you for the 20 sec. Uh, that sounds gay. Venomous Socks, thank you to 5 Canadian. Chris the Narc has DMs of this pinned comment. Uh, Trevor Iceberg, $10. I'm a certified psycho motor retard. Uh, Chaos and Control, $5. Keffels now has Chris Chan's head shape and 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 jowls now. I think Twink Death is hitting hard. Uh, RWBY Familian, thank you for the $2. How do you have all these? What the fuck? Uh, I <laughs> I don't know. Brooke, thank you so much for the $100. Um, late birthday gift, also my birthday. Happy birthday. None of my 2,000 friends and family showed up. Well, thankfully, they're supportive and they're here right now. Um, Atlantis Pup, thank you for the gifted. Uh, Bajarni, thank you for the new membership. Blueberry, thank you for the gift. Claws, thank you for the month, one month. Uh, the Queefles video gave me a migraine. Thanks, Nick. Deactivated lemon ten dollars So happy I didn't miss the stream. I've been waiting for another URR, and it's finally here. This is the best show ever, and I'll tell you why. There's never a dry moment. There's never a, oh, God, I just, I don't have content for today. It's, it's influencer drama. There's always another rapist. So we can do this forever until YouTube bans me, I think. That's probably the way we're going to go. Um... 
So happy I didn't miss the stream. Yeah, I read that one. Good night. Got a new membership. Uh, say good night. Gave five gifted. Passion seventy six PJ with uh, two Australian. I think Lol Cow should have E Falba on. Brooks new membership. Pragmatic Culture five dollars. Tonka tried to hit it, but still won't show his test results. Billy the Kid five dollars. Hey Nick, love the streams. Whatever happened to the flamenco stream with the P cup thumbnail? I mean, I could put it back up whenever. Uh, I was going through when people were flagging and taking out the curses, and I just stopped. Uh, to be honest, I just figured that no one really cared about a lot of the older content but i can put it back up whenever it doesn't really matter um somebody i'm kind of surprised nobody ever reposted those somebody five dollars ayala got gang banged harder than max when he exposed just another youtuber uh, as just another youtuber might as well go ahead and become a member i've been here since 2017 brooks thank you for the ten dollars it is time to start talking about absurd so this is who logan is logan's been accused um, Why are there idiot and again i'm going to repeat what chud logic said when he showed me this video um, I want all of you, listen, listen, to go into this with an open mind, all right? I'm not telling you whose side we're on here, because I don't know yet. I only saw a very little bit of this. That's the thing on URR, we don't research, okay? We find out who's right in the moment, and we decide, okay? Or we pander, cope, and don't say anything, but uh, most of the time, we're going to decide, Okay? Like all good rape reviewers do, all right? We're going to make educated guesses on people's personal lives, all right? That's the most important thing we can do. Very serious statement. But um, before we look at any people in here, I'm going to warn you. Do not, like, how do I say this without, sat, without ruining it? Um, do not let first impressions dictate your opinions. Uh, because for all we know, this person could be right. We'll find out. All right. Let's just be nice before we go into this. Okay. Welcome back. So this is, uh, um, this is observe. This is the type of stuff you know, he does. We do like body language esque shit. Feeling trapped. They like, oh my God, she just looked off to the left. I mean, she's not confident. This type of shit. Yeah. Don't take the route that I did. My mother told me and told the doctors that I had everything from leukemia she's lying no i'm kidding um but yeah this is this is the guy right he does body language uh what gypsy rose is body language after prison reveals to us type shit it's a 700 a thousand sub youtuber this person gets like i mean they've, they've got some pretty big videos here they were one of the, oh yeah shane dawson's body hey, language to to this crap a couple various areas if you look in a certain area you can see a lot of action up in here this is where a lot of anger will display itself <laughs> You can also see <laughs> these people are all snake oil salesmen, dude. They're all snake oil. So I don't believe this shit. Ex this is not real. I'm sorry. The, the sort of deadpan anger that you would notice, where his face and eyes are largely expressionless, but with that like kind of cold expression that you would. This is all pseudoscience sort of bullshit. Along with that, you could see this tight. I prescribe Keffels as medication to this person to make them better. Flipped expression here closer to the end and this is also an indicator of genuine anger so he is genuinely angry i do hope that he will make a video in reaction to tati's video that's not dude fuck off bro all right so we're poisoning the well a little bit but i had to to really even the odds here um so this is piper frazier all right chat calm down calm down because it's actually <laughs> Chat, a new video dropped recently. It's called Observe Is My Abuser The Truth About Logan Pornier and uh, Logan Paul. The truth about Logan Paul and our divorce. All right. So this is his ex-wife. Um, she posted a vlog from before she got divorced, before she walked, I guess she got to the lawyer office or whatever early or the court, whatever. And she got there early chat. And she's like, I got to film a vlog about my divorce, which is always what you want to do. Uh, you're, you know, that's, that's always your number one priority in situation. Lois Griffin, Lois Griffin, Peter, Peter, we're getting divorced. Yeah. That's what's happening here. Uh, but yeah, yeah. So she, she was, she was getting divorced and she filmed a quick vlog. Uh, so we're going to find out, we're going to grade this on a scale from one to Jeffrey Epstein. Hi, this is Piper. You know me from the YouTube channel Observe with Logan Portonier. 
today I'm divorcing him. And <laughs> bro, dude, this is law. This is literally pro Jared. This is pro. Imagine if he found out he was getting divorced through his wife's vlog. And I, I'm literally at the courthouse. I will be there in an hour, and he will be appearing remotely. Bro, this guy couldn't even show up to his own divorce. He's appearing remotely at his own divorce. That's how much he doesn't care about this woman. Oh, no. Wait, that, that's so over. Through Zoom, and I will be divorced. Dude, she's literally divorcing in Oregon. Yes, Smaggle. And free to speak on who he is. Because who he is is a fucking monster. Oh! He is a gaslighting, abusive, manipulative, lying monster. All right, we got gaslighting. Should we start taking notes on this chat? We got gaslighting, manipulative, lying, and abusive. Okay. He has no credentials for what he does. Whoa, fuck, wait. Are you saying that the... No, chat, no! Are you saying the body language drama YouTuber doesn't have credentials for what he's doing? He hasn't passed the fucking bar? He hasn't passed the what? What is the medical? It's a, the MCAT? Are you kidding me? He has made up all of his experience. None of it is real. He's never trained anyone. Dude, he's such a dude. This guy, this guy's being accused of such hardcore rape. He's raped his own credibility. He's raped his own credentials as a doctor. No, wait, what? Whoa, chat. He's never worked on any cases. He's never. Anything he says that he's done. Dude, this is the this is the most insane rape ever, dude. He raped his own audience. He raped you. Never done it. He's never even taken the master's course that he promotes. Dude, he didn't even take a master's course. Crazy, bro. That's that's some domestic abuse right there. His manager, Bunny, is his girl. Wait, is that Bo Blacks' ex girlfriend, Bunny? Wait a minute. Is he dating the... Dude, did you guys remember when Bo Blacks' ex-girlfriend sw swore off men forever and became a deacon? Do you guys remember this? They became, like, one with the church after dating Bo Blacks. Do you, not, do you remember this? Is this a deep lore item? <laughs> uh, bunny. Like, f like drug bunny? Or is that who we're talking about? Um... Like, yeah, Discord... Bo Blacks' is Discord e-girlfriend that, that ended up swearing off men forever. Um... Yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure. What did Bunny do? His manager, Bunny, is his girlfriend who- Whoa! Whoa! He cheated on me with- No! Bro, nepotism in the workplace, bro! And now lives with. Dude, wait, how could you cheat on someone like this? Um, so when he says the observed team or something, it's just Bunny. She's his employee, and they're sleeping. Dude, back. he just started plowing his intern. Wow. Uh, so, do with that information. Wait, wait, all right. So this video is called My Abuser. And so far, we've learned so much about her abuse. We've learned that his, that, like, uh, like, he cheated on her. Uh, he has no credentials, and his YouTube persona is a sham. So that's the rape review thus far. Uh, no abuse so far. As you will. When I was in my relationship with him, he was incredibly psychologically, emotionally, mentally, physically, and sexually abusive to me. Oh, okay. So he's all of the above. He's a D. He's a D. He would bait me throughout the day with flirtatious texts and then accuse me of being a sex addict when I would try to initiate sex with him and then what? he would initiate at the worst times when I was emotionally down or <laughs> had been manipulated by him or he was love bombing. Wait, wait, no, no, that's the worst thing a husband could do for his wife is love bomb her. Oh God. Oh chat, make sure you don't love bomb your wife, chat. Make sure you don't love bomb your wife. That's that is some Kino cause like that is some rape right there. Holy shit. Wait, what the fuck does that mean? What does that even mean? Did anyone understand a word she just said? At the worst times when accused me of being a sex addict when I would- Wait, wait, so she'd be like, listen, I don't want to have sex right now. Oh yeah? Well, I want to have sex right now. Okay, I'll have sex right now. Oh, you're a degenerate sex addict. <laughs> you're gaslighting me. 
No, you're cute. Oh, now you're love bombing me? What do you want to do? Rape me here and now? Like, what? is this how these people talk to each other? This is some Discord shit. What is this? What's happening, bro? He initiated sex at the worst time. What does that mean? What are we talking about here? This is so vague. It's like, it's so vague, but all the allegations are so clear. It's like, yeah, he did some stuff and it was rape. And it fucking he raped me throughout our entire relationship. It's like, oh. Oh, shit, sure, that sounds pretty. What did he do? Yeah, he was like, uh, he was like, uh, love bomby and stuff. Uh, my husband was a little love bomby back then. Initiate sex with him. And then he would initiate at the worst times when I was emotionally down or had been manipulated by him or he was love bombing and then he would initiate sex and knew that how do you like manipulate your wife into having sex with you like you'd be like oh come on honey you haven't done it in a while come on just give me a blowy or whatever like is that rape now i mean i, I understand if you're being pushy and aggressive and then you're like going further with that but like you're married to this person isn't that just like <laughs> i don't know i don't get it why is this rape dude like i I understand it's probably a dick move, but is it is that rape? Is that what that is that what rape is now? Can we get like a secondary word? Can we can we can we stop calling all this stuff the same thing? Why is it when you like fucking rape a uh, well, who is it? What is who's the guy who got away with it? Uh, like raping a girl in a back like a defenseless drunk woman in a back alley. It's the same as love bombing your wife now. These are these are the same terms. We refer to these things with the same language. Uh, not O.J. Simpson. No, he killed his wife. Of course he didn't, though. He was very, very uh, innocent. Who am I thinking of? Who's the guy? Who's Brock Turner, all right? Brock Turner and this girl's fucking husband are called the same thing. Is that not crazy to you? To hear those words echoed as the same? Like, literally, could you imagine being compared to Brock Turner? It's like, what, what did you do? Well, my wife said that I love-bombed her, and I, offered, I asked her to have sex a few times, and some of them were during bad moments. Like, it's like, what are you talking about? I, it's, I, it's why I laugh. I don't know. But, but like, obviously that like, when I hear these situations, like coercion is rape, right? Like, I agree with that hundred percent. When coercion comes up and stuff like that, uh, I, I totally, I understand why that's like, I would say sexual assault, right? Even though all these words are interchangeable and they don't mean anything anymore. Um, I, I just feel like there needs to be like degrees to this stuff. Because, like, Brock Turner is, like, super rape. You know what I mean? It, by that definition, Brock Turner will be, like, super rape. I don't know. I, I just... All these things are, are getting looped together as if they're all equally the same. They're not. But I would give in. So he... Under psychological duress... What, like, these are all buzzwords. Like, I was under psychological duress with lots of gaslighting. Like, she's just Googled, like, what words make, like, my, what do I say during my expose? It tricked me into having sex with him, so he raped me over it. And Whoa! Wait, I'm so sorry. I looked away for a second. She just dropped the hardest verse of all time. Hold on. knew that I would give in. So he, under psychological duress, would trick me into having sex with him. So he raped me. <laughs> he over. tricked me into having sex with Like, what does that mean? Over and over and over again over years and would play with my mind in every aspect he used my illness and endometriosis against me he led me into psychosis dude me. this guy's the body language expert you know who this is bro this is eminem from d12 he's like yo my salsa mix all the pretty girls want to dance and take off their underpants my salsa mix all the pretty girls want to dance and take off their underpants my salsa bro he's like hips don't lie and then when he starts swinging from side to side she's like i gotta take him off i gotta take him off like that's what's happening right now he's using he's using his immense power as a body language expert to get his wife to fuck him like that's what's like what is happening he was treating me i experienced psychosis almost every day for nearly i was experiencing psychosis every day bro he's mind controlled her like he just like he starts dancing he's like he puts like one of those like he's like smiles a certain way and he's like yeah i know what you're thinking right now i know every movement your body makes and what's going on in your head i can read your mind with your lips or whatever it's like whoa jesus dude the way he was treating me i experienced psychosis almost every day for nearly a year because no! You're telling me with that nose ring you experience psychosis every day for a year? Are you serious? I who else? No. No. No, chat. Because of the way he was treating me and he didn't give a fuck. He didn't care. He would do whatever he wanted, do to me whatever he wanted, didn't 
care at all what was happening to me mentally or emotionally or physically. I was a burden to him. He would tell me that. <laughs> Dude, I finally, we finally found something that was legit. <laughs> like, what is happening here? That he like, here's the thing. This guy could be totally guilty of something. But, like, do you guys, like, just make fucking vlogs to talk about shit like this? Like, this guy could be totally, like, a giga rapist pedo or something. Like, it's totally possible. Uh, I'm not just gonna say, like, this guy's perfect or whatever. I don't even know anything about him. I would never die on a hill defending somebody I don't even know. Haven't even heard his side of the story yet, so I can't really go anywhere with that. But what I'm- what I am telling you is that, like... If you're ever in a situation where you've been abused in some way, shape, or form, you need to, like, reach out and peer review whatever you're posting. Because, like, I, how is this person ever going to be taken seriously after posting something like this? I don't mean to be an asshole, but this video is fucking terrible. I've, I only saw a minute of this prior to watching it. We're now another minute in. And this is literally, like... I, Outside of a satirical viewing party, this is unwatchable. This is the who the fuck is taking this seriously? Is there anybody on the internet who's looking at this and go, oh, "It's the subreddit. The subreddit is taking it seriously." We'll get there. We'll get there, chat. Couldn't be mad at a concept of my illness. He had to be mad at me. He, near the end of our relationship, said that it was no longer his responsibility to pay for my well-being but he wouldn't allow me to get a job when what I was What does that mean? Say, Near the end of my separation, he, wait, wait, wait. To pay for my well-being, but he wouldn't allow me to get a job. When I would say, I'll get a job, he would say, how would that make me look making a disabled person work? And this would be after he would scream at me, like literally in my face, scream at me for <laughs> hours saying, you do nothing, you provide nothing. I do everything for you. You do absolutely nothing. And I would say, okay. Is there a chance? All right. I, maybe this is overstepping the lines. Is there a chance that she literally does nothing? Like, is there any, just like a slight chance that he might be right? Like, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't I'll know. go get a job. And then he would respond with that. And she, cl she claims she's been in a state of psychosis for the last year. Here's my question. Again, I, I, this is a real leader, right? I understand it's a real leading question, but... There is something to be said about dating a person like this. You know? Like, there's something clearly wrong with this person. I, it, in my most charitable sense of the term, there's something clearly wrong with this person. How do you get married to a person who's like, yeah, I was in a state of psychosis for a year. My husband was... I mean, was she, like, normal when you tied the knot? Or, like... I... Mm, I don't know. Yeah, ginger, yes. A ginger. I don't... I don't know. I never had access to our money. Never... Uh, other than grocery shopping. And even then, most of the time, it was declined. He... Cheated on me with Bunny... He pushed me into a wall. He trapped me in a car so he could scream at me. What is... Whoa! I tried to call the police on him many times, and he would take my phone out of my hand. Um... Now, I did see some of Chud's coverage, and he did bring up, like, well, there could be a paper trail, right? Like, if she tried to call the police on this guy, at least there'd be, like, a, a record that that call had taken place. But eagle-eyed viewers would point to the fact that, unfortunately, all of the time she, she tried to call the police, it appears, unfortunately, um, he took the phone out of her hand every single time. So there's no record of that having happened. So it's kind of a trust me bro type thing. And um, yeah. He would hit our dogs. Uh, she did have a point with saying it for her to get a job. Yeah, but if it's true that she didn't like, that he would be like, oh, well, how does it look to make me get, make my wife get a job or whatever. If that's true, then that's kind of shitty too, I'd say. He would not get me food when I was trapped on the couch or in bed because of my illness. He would. What illness do you have? That's the next question. I was trapped on the couch and he wouldn't feed me? Just let me go hungry or thirsty because he was busy. And how dare I ask him? He... This is really hard. 
I can't. I can't do this. I can't. I can't. Well, then why are you posting it? You understand that this had to go to editing, right? You didn't post this outside of the fucking. I can't do this. I can't do it. I don't know how I'm gonna post this video. Well, you did, and you left that part in. You understand? You're not live streaming from the courthouse. This is an edited, recorded video. Can't speak on everything. You put it into fucking OBS Studio to record it or something, and then you go into fucking Premiere Pro and you chop that part out, and you replace it with something that you can put in there. It's real easy. Did right now? It is too difficult for me. Maybe at a future date. Wait, whoa, 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 I'm so sorry. Hold really on. Hard. I can't. I can't do this. I can't. I can't speak on everything that he did right now. It is too difficult. What do you mean? You just made a video call. He's my abuser. You've been just fucking jerking us along for four minutes. He said he re-raped you throughout your whole relationship. How do you end that by being like, all right, guys, I really can't speak on this right now. I'll do it when I'm ready. <laughs> like, this is your video. What do you mean? For me. Maybe at a future date, I'll speak about everything, but just know that he is a horrible fucking monster. How could you say that? You didn't give us anything to work with. How can I tell my- Why don't I go to my audience and report back? All right, you're so, um, this guy's a rapist. He raped his girlfriend for a hundred days straight. Uh, he's real psychologically abusive. He apparently hits dogs and like, there's nothing here. I, she tried to go to the police, but was unfortunately stopped. Uh... I guess she couldn't get off the couch and he like taped her phone to the ceiling so she couldn't reach it. I, I don't what's happening. He deserves nothing in this world. He deserves the pits of hell for what he did. <laughs> the pits of he, hell. He does not deserve to have a platform, especially <laughs> ban him, ban his channel now. Where he goes about saying that he's a voice for the abused. He deserves to rot in hell. And I have no shame saying that whatsoever. I mean, I agree, because he's like a body language channel, and he sells snake oil to people, but like... Whatever. He should go to hell. He should die. Her, her official her official standpoint, like, when she's re she's learned a little bit of body language. Her stance is that he should die. That's her, that's her opinion. I'm moving on for me. He's, he's been sentenced to death. Death by a hundred... <laughs> Death by a hundred scorned lovers. But also for me, I need to say this because it's part of me moving on. Part of me moving on means that I'm not going to just lie and let him get away with the abuse because he's getting out of this divorce with nothing. I'm getting no money. <laughs> what? How? How? You're saying she's like, like what, are you, what are you talking about? Nothing. Even what I'm owed is not getting to me because I can't handle his throwing a fit any longer. It is emotionally ex Bro, this is the best ex-wife possible. I'm washing my hands. Keep all the money. Bro, now I get it. Now I know how you marry people like this. Oh, fuck, dude. I hope when I get divorced, it goes this well. Oh. Exhausting. And I cannot handle it. So I've given up. I've thrown in the towel and said, fuck it. I'll get divorced. As long as that happens, I can move forward because I can't move forward when he's striking. This is the best ex-wife ever, bro. She makes a horrible video to defend herself. She literally comes out and says, fuck it, you can keep all my money. Could you ask for a better ex? Down every day. So I hope his career is destroyed. I hope- I hope his career is destroyed! It's- it's not- Dude, have you ever watched one of these videos where it's like, Oh, I've gone a little overboard. Uh, I don't know if I should have said that. And it's like, yeah, I don't know, it wasn't that bad. You could have said worse. And you end the video with, I hope his career is destroyed. He ends up in the pits of hell. He deserves nothing less. Okay, chat. So that was our lube, all right? Now we're gonna get in there, okay? Because we have um, we have an extended statement to read, okay, chat? We're gonna read this, all right? Um, so homegirl Piper Frazier, thirty thousand views on this video. Um, and the comments are 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 exactly what you'd expect, but um, there's a there's a post. The truth. It's the truth. Yeah, we were looking for the truth, and luckily, chat, we've been given the truth, okay? Piper Frazier, speaking the truth. Okay, are you guys ready? All right. This is going to be the most annoying segment. You know why? Because your boy has to read. All right, I'm putting it on OBS. I'm reading it from the OBS window, like all the cheating people from um, speed running. I have my OBS window open to read this shit. Let's go! 
Um, hi, I'm Piper. Most of you know me as the ex-wife of Logan P Oh, fuck, bro. Dude, could you imagine writing something like that? Hey, what's going on, guys? I just want to let everyone... I mean, I'm sure most of you know me as some famous guy's ex-wife, but uh, from the Body Language channel. Oh, gee. T tipster AI. Uh, I feel like I'll use my... I need to save the tipster AI for the video I'm working on, but... Um, so, now that we're officially divorced, I'm here to speak on the truth of what happened to, and who Logan is. If you've been following me, you know that in the past I've been pretty open about my abuser, but have had to be silent during the divorce proceedings. Today, I want to very clearly state that Logan Pornier of The Observe is my abuser. I also want to, uh, I was also a victim of abuse and assaulted by his partner and manager. Oh, God, now apparently Bunny raped her, too. Dude, it's just like a fucking... It's just a rape fucking... So it's, it's a harem of... It's the... She was removed from the rape polycule. Um... Bunny Ann. Or, oh, oh, fuck, wait. Oh, Jesus, I'm gonna scroll past that. No one enters a relationship thinking that they are or will be abused by their significant other. I guess she just doxed her. I didn't know that was coming. Um, we're gonna have to remove that from the VOD. Unless her name's public, of course. I don't know. I'll look into it after. Um, I met Logan when I was a month shy of 19, and he was freshly 21. <laughs> what are these words? Like, why are you writing it like that? I was a month shy of 19, and he was freshly 21, chat. Oh, God. Can we get some, uh... Yeah, let's go with that. I was freshly 21, chat. Here we go. Okay. I'm ready. I met Logan when I was a month shy of 19, and he was freshly 21. At the time, I'd just moved to Bozeman. MT, is that Montreal? Mount Mountain? Montana? And I met him through one of my brothers. Logan Paul was attending the Montana Bible College to become a pastor. And I was working at a coffee shop. I was also dating someone long distance. Logan and I became friends quickly, and he was perfectly charming, and made me feel like he understood me. He was really into body language, and I was very quiet, so I felt like he knew me every time that he would read that I was in pain, and no one else knew. Eventually. He convinced me to leave my boyfriend for him. Wait, did you cheat on your boyfriend with him? And he was showering me with compliments, affections, and gifts. As someone who had spent their life being outcast of the group, the attention felt intoxicating. Very soon after we started dating, literally everyone in my life was telling me that he was not a good person and that I should break it off with him. I, of course, ran him with these accusations and he convinced me that everyone was out to get him. And it was just us against the world. Again, as someone who has always been desperate for attention, all of his love bombing just swept me up and I was hooked. Fast forward to about two years, we're getting married up until this point. He'd been incredibly physically affectionate with me, as I had expressed it was my love language. Although we were conservative Christians, we sinned and had sex before marriage. And after that, I was sure I couldn't marry anyone else, because now I was damaged goods, according to my religion. He was the only one I could be with. I had sinned and no one could know. I remembered the night before my wedding, I laying in bed with every part of my body body just screaming to run to go upstairs and tell my parents I wanted out of the wedding but I was damaged I had sinned I deserved this I went through with the wedding <laughs> that evening when we got to the honeymoon suite he changed he'd been making grand promises about how amazing and physically charged our honeymoon would be but once we got there I put on the pretty lingerie I picked out for him and he scoffed at me and said, What the fuck makes you think that I want to have sex with you right now? And he pulled away every time I tried to get close to cuddle. It was incredibly confusing, but I tried to rationalize it that he was just tired for the long day. But that rationale ran out 
when he continued through the next months to bait me through the day with spicy texts, and when we were home together, he would jump back, and when I touched his arm and say things like, Who are you? What are you? A fucking sex addict? You wanted sex yesterday? Why would you want it today, too? Even though he'd made sexual promises all day long, this went on for three years until I gave up on how I looked. I gave up on trying to initiate. I gave up on having any intimate desires at all. I wonder why he got divorced. Um, he was less explosive, and we had fewer fights when I just had no needs. So that's what I began doing. We gotta move on to the next Max Payne theme song. Let's go to three now. Is three good? Does three give us the same... He then learned that he could coerce me into sex by love bombing, and only initiated when he'd put me down, and put me down, and I knew I would feel like I had to say yes. This continued through our relationship- Wait, hold on, I don't understand. So you wanted to fuck him, and then he was like, no, no, I don't want to have sex right now, no. And then he'd want to have sex with you by doing exactly, like, all the same spicy texts, and now it's abuse? When he wanted to fuck like it just sounds like we're the same exact thing like we haven't changed anything it's just now it's abuse because he wanted to have sex like when it was abuse when he didn't want to have sex and it's abuse when he wanted to now like don't get me wrong if this is real like it was, it was pretty weird this guy's pretty odd but like i was nothing telling me to believe this girl at this moment in time there's nothing here so far this is just spoken word okay so after we got married in 2017, there's so much I could say. Like how within six months, I was researching signs you're in over- Oh fuck, bro, she was net decking! This is what I was talking about when I thought I had a concussion, dude! She's researching narcissistic symptoms, and she's like, Oh, that's my husband! No way! Like, that's what- Oh no, this is so over, bro. I, I didn't even mean to preempt this. Holy shit, chat. Oh no. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, jeez. Oh, dear. It's not good. All right. Here we go, chat. So after we got married in 2017, there's so much I could say. Like how within six months I was researching signs or in a relationship with a narcissist because he was making me feel insane. But we'd be here all day if I did that, so let's flash forward to the end of tw well, two years? We're going two years ahead, chat. Where I was the sickest I'd ever been from edonometriosis. What the fuck is that? Hold on, chat. What is Edonometriosis? It sounds like a dinosaur from Jurassic Park. Oh, that's next to the T-Rex. That's the that's the Edonometriosis paddock. Um, it's a disease where tissue similar to the lining of the uterus grows outside the uterus. It causes severe pelvic pain and it makes it harder to get pregnant. Thank God. Um, here we go. I was using a walker just to get from my bed to the bathroom. That sucks, though. He's the most obsessed he's ever been about his YouTube channel. He'd always been too invested in it. But it was a lot during this time. He spent all of his time fucking around with his unnecessary set and editing videos for his 20,000 subscribers, which I know now means absolutely nothing. He refused to get a full-time job because it took away from his time to make videos even though we weren't able to pay our bills and get groceries most weeks. He continued to purchase equipment and then when I would question him on it, he would scream at me and say, I didn't have a spine because I didn't make most of our money and he needed it. He refused to live in a cheaper, smaller place because he needed it. A whole room for his YouTube channel. During the time, he also insisted I try to sell feet pics. He pimped me and made me manage the account he made for my feet. It went nowhere. I felt used. On March 6, 2020, I had a surgery in Atlanta, Georgia, the day before we left. Jesus Christ. That's kind of crazy if that's real. I've been calm during it. I felt safe to say that I didn't feel like I had enough emotional support from him. And I was going through this horrible time of pain. For reference, I've been passing out almost daily and vomiting about how intense the pain was that I was in. When I said that to him, he burst into tears and ran down the hall yelling and then collapsed on the floor in the fetal position. He was saying that he sacrificed everything for me. And how dare I say that he doesn't support me or what I was doing just to hurt him. And he gives everything to me and I give nothing to him. 
I, of course, confronted him and apologized for what I said. The next day on the plane, I was nonstop vomiting from pain that I was in. I looked to him for help and he told me, be quiet, because I was interrupting the on-flight movie. When the airport attendant pushed my wheelchair, was asking for invasive questions about my health and fertility, he interrupted me to answer her questions with immediate details about my health without my consent. The night before my surgery, I was having a panic attack about being able to get to the hospital without vomiting or passing out, and he told me to shut up and be quiet so he could sleep? Clearly, he was super emotionally supportive, just like he said he was. There were so many more details that I could share about this time, but let's fast forward to when his YouTube took off. I believe it was August of 2020. Jeffree Star just released his Golden Couch Apology video. Chat, how many of you guys know which one that was? Because I do. I was taking a bath on the other side of Logan's studio and suggested that he make a video about it. Oh, you're the reason he's famous! You are to thank for this! You created him and he fucked... He fucked an intern. You created him and he fucked an intern instead. Ooh, damn. This is your YouTube channel. I understand. The next day it blew up. What he didn't know was that while he was recording that video, I was looking at studio apartments in my hometown, and I considered reaching out to my family to get me out. I was tired of the screaming and fighting and the journaling. I just wanted to be loved and happy. But when that Jeffree Star video took off, Logan calmed. He was receiving praise from thousands. He got his first YouTube plaque. He got his first large paycheck, and we could pay our bills. Life was looking up. So my husband got rich, and I realized he wasn't abusive, so I stayed for a little bit, and then it got bad. That's what I'm hearing, but whatever. However, we were still fighting. And when we did, it was explosive. Screaming, slamming doors, him telling me, just leave. And when I would say, okay, I'm leaving, he would break down crying and beg me to stay, making grand promises about how he would change, telling me that I had nowhere to go anyways because in his words, my family didn't even want me. He'd make grand apologies with gifts, aka love bombing. Ayo, beep, 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 beep. He frequently told me he'd taken an apology class and I hadn't. He was the only one in our relationship who knew how to apologize properly. The common phrase of his during fights was, you have no ground to stand on, when I would bring up something that bothered me. This all continued when we moved to Seattle in 2021. Oh, that was your first problem. He was constantly explaining about how great life was now that we had a big home and we were making lots of money, and I, however, was more unhappy than ever. He was constantly reading my body language and assuming how I was feeling, telling me that I was lying because my body language wasn't matching up, and then gaslighting me by saying he didn't read me at all. I had no money of my own and had to ask every time I spent anything. I was questioning my reality at every turn. I was completely isolated because every time I tried to do something social, to make friends, to include virtual art, to hang out, he would have a meltdown about how lonely he was and how dare I take time away from him. I didn't know how bad it was for him to be alone with his thoughts. That's where we suggested we explore non-monogamy. We rarely had sex. I felt like the desire to explore my sexuality and I secretly wanted someone to show affection to me. And at the suggestion that we explore the idea of non-monogamy, he jumped straight to let's download apps, which I'm sure you can imagine did not go well. I had major success immediately and he had no matches. This led to the biggest meltdown in threats yet. He threatened to leave. He told me to leave. He was going with somebody he had matched with that day. He told me that I ruined our marriage by suggesting non-monogamy, made a huge scene when we walked our dog, and generally verbally attacked me. I finally calmed him down by deleting the apps and organizing a meeting with a couple's therapist. But in January of 2022, when we began seeing our therapist, Sarah, I had no idea what a bad therapy idea with Logan would be. He had, he had to act like our one-way sessions Wait, uh, sorry, he had to act like one way in our sessions, and then he screamed at me after. He would tell me not to share things that wouldn't look bad to her. He threw so When he threw something during a fight and it breezed past my face, I told him if he threw something again, I'd leave, and I brought it to Sarah. His excuse was that he had to get his anger out, and it was small. Why did it ma matter? Sarah had separate sessions with us later that week where she asked me if I felt safe in our home, and I lied and said yes because I thought he could be listening in. Wait, why? That's so illegal. What? That's a lie. That did not happen. You didn't think that your boyfriend was listening into your fucking secret therapy meeting. What were you doing it on? Better help? 
Like, what are you talking about? That's a fucking lie. No, that's the first major lie. Okay, I'm sorry. That's a that's the first one where I'm like, there's no way that's real. I'm, I'm fine saying it. That's not real. There's no way. I'm sorry, chat. I'm breaking out of the mold, okay? Um, his excuse was he had to get his anger out. It was so small. Why did it matter? Sarah had separate sessions with us later that week where she asked me if I felt safe and I lied and said yes because I thought I could, he could be listening in. When I told her that I couldn't even go to the grocery store alone because he would have a meltdown, she told me, isn't that a lot of control for someone to have over you? And I said, is it? Oh, so she's retarded. What do you mean? Yeah, like what are you talking about? How? Just completely unable to grasp what's happening to me. To me, I thought, this was all normal because I had no one to share any of this with, and I'd been trained never to say a bad word about my husband. He always had an excuse, and it always made up for what he did, and he took a class on apologies, so he, he means it, right? I can't, dude, I have to suspend disbelief. I can't, I can't think that someone's this fucking retarded. I'm sorry, bro. I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't picture someone being this stupid. I don't get it. And so I can understand falling for it in the in like the hindsight, but I can't imagine writing that down and thinking that makes sense. I don't get it. Oh man, I don't get it. Is Spencer involved in this one too? <laughs> oh man. Oh god, that's just bad. That's just oh fuck, man. Jesus, I I, I don't know. It's insane. I can't imagine someone. Would get, it's crazy. To me, I thought it was all normal. Oh fuck, I just hit the wrong one. To me, I thought it was all normal because I had no one to share any of this with. Well, he threw a phone onto my camera, and it was next to me on a bed, and his phone broke, and I didn't leave, so I hid that one from therapy because I felt ashamed that I didn't leave. He never threw anything at me ever again, but during fights he would say, I'm trying so hard not to throw something at you. You should be grateful. Which was chilling every single time. Around this time we met Bunny, through her now ex-husband, who Logan had met in 2015 when we were both working at Walmart. Bunny was a charming friend. She really seemed to care about us, and to no one's surprise, she was also polyamorous. In April of 2022, Logan and I had decided with Sarah that we would start exploring a relationship outside of our own. However, when I asked out Bunny, Logan threw a fit saying it was ruining our marriage and tried to gaslight Sarah and me into believing I had done this maliciously. Thankfully, she didn't fall for it, and neither did I. He also had a meltdown saying I thought we would share Bunny. And I was like, she's not a toy, she's a person. In May, Bunny and I had began dating and set the scene out for our relationship. We'd only ever cuddled and held hands occasionally. Unfortunately, this was also around the time when my endo was getting bad again, and I was having to use a wheelchair or walker to get to most places. Just for context, soon after we started dating, Logan and Bunny started hanging out one-on-one. -on -one. We'll both claim nothing was going on. Bro, hold on. Time out. Time out. Bro, I thought your wife cheated on you. With Bunny. I didn't realize you were dating Bunny. And your husband started fucking your girlfriend. Dude, total polyamory death, chat. I can't do it. I can't take any of this shit seriously. I thought a husband cheated on his wife. Not a husband stole his wife's girlfriend. That's not real. None of this is real. Fuck you. Like, no. You dated her first and, he, and your husband took your girlfriend away. What does that mean? <laughs> like, stop. Shame. This woman was like, she married her husband because she's Catholic and she sinned and she didn't want to tell anyone about it. And now she's polyamorous and her girlfriend ran off with her husband. How did that person become this person? <laughs> what does that mean? Oh, ah! 
soon after we started dating, Logan and Bunny started hanging out one-on-one -on -one and both claimed that nothing was going on. I think it was literally the week after I started dating her. Logan hired her without telling me and things really went downhill in July. When I had surgery in Portland, Logan and Bunny both came with me. Wait, wait, so your husband reached out to you? Hold on, hold on. Stop the music, stop the music. Stop the Carl Jobs music. All right, listen. So your husband went, hey, I think that this thing with Bunny is kind of weird. Maybe we should stop seeing her. And then you said, fuck you, husband. I'm going to keep dating her. So your husband went, okay, fuck you. I'm going to start fucking her. And you're like, my husband cheated on me. Wah! Got it. Cool. Nice. Nice. Logan couldn't handle seeing physical affection between Bunny and me, despite saying differently whenever I questioned it. So the night after my surgery, we were all hanging out in the bedroom where I was recovering and Bunny was next to me. Upon seeing me touch her knee, Logan got up and left the room. He went and sat in the kitchen to cry and Bunny got up to comfort him. During this time, I could hear their whole conversation. It lasted hours. Logan and Bunny discussed how I'd apparently coerced Logan into a polyamory despite him actively messaging people throughout dating apps. and literally going to therapy for it where he agreed what we were at it and how it was disrespectful of me because of how much he'd given up to take care of me and how good life was for him and I just wanted to ruin it. Bunny agreed with everything he said and after he had seemingly vented enough they began discussing spirituality and how much more spiritually mature they both were than everyone else around them and how they thought they were each other's soulmates. And while they were having this lengthy conversation I needed my surgery medication, so I texted Logan and he replied I'll be right there and he took over an hour and a half to bring me my medication and he yelled at me for interrupting him because, well, I should have known he needed to vent about me. Wait, what does that mean? I'm so dumb, bro. Well, we're having this lengthy conversation. I read that one. Uh, I was drugged and in pain and shocked, so I just sat there and took it and then silently cried myself to sleep like most other nights. The next morning, they acted like nothing happened. Around this time, Logan's followers had voted on the charity I chose, the Endodermetriosis Research Center, for a collaboration with Kurt River, and I was supposed to design those t-shirts as I am an ARTIST! No! It's another Twitter artist chat! It's a Twitter art. Ew! 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 It's a fucking artist. No! Yikers! Yikers! Chat. Twitter artist alert. Twitter artist alert. <laughs> It's Twitter artist chat. I'm the one with endo. However, while I was recovering on the couch, I heard him give her the task in another room. I couldn't fight it. He made sure I had no say anytime I brought things up that related to observe because I had no ground to stand on. That one hurt. In August, Bunny said that I had a date that went well, even though we had been butting heads since the day we got together. When we hugged, oh wait, in August, Bunny and I had a date that went well, even though we'd been butting heads forever. But when we hugged goodbye, she went to kiss me. This would have been fine if we had not explicitly discussed many times that before she and I kissed, I wanted her to ask me consent because I might not be ready for it. The truth was that Logan wasn't ready for it. She did not ask me and tried to pull my head in for a kiss. And when I pulled back and said not yet, she went silent and didn't say another word. So I had to leave. And Logan, of course, trying to make this all about him. I had to say when I got home, I'm the one who went through this. I need time to process. And for him to stop saying how awful of a person I am and how I should just leave him. Anticipating for me to comfort him. For the first time, I didn't. We were supposed to go to Rent Fair. Rent Fair? Ren Fair. As a group that weekend. And I didn't feel comfortable going before Bunny and I discussed what had happened. So she, however, did not want to meet in person and only wanted to communicate through written format. When I said that she had told me and agreed one thing consent and she acted another way forcing herself on me i was upset by her reaction or lack thereof she gave me the silent treatment and was still constantly messaging logan we eventually communicated through email where she brushed me through email bro through email 
three I gotta check my Gmail. My girlfriend fucking responded to my consent thing. <laughs> she, she sent me a picture of a cat smoking a blunt and said that, oops, <laughs> like, <laughs> through email. <laughs> like, what are you talking this is the first. This is the first rape review that's done through, entirely through email transactions. Oh, God. Okay. All this time, Logan and Bunny are getting closer, but they're denying it to everyone around them who points it out. They were frequently mistaken as a couple because they were always joking and giggling and fucking around together. The next week, I broke up with Bunny, and when that's when the straw broke the camel's back. She told me she viewed Logan as her soulmate and would always put more energy into her best friend relationships than her romantic ones because she always wanted to act her best for partners but be real with friends only. That was such bullshit to me. I couldn't take it. I broke up with her over text because she was refusing to meet and speak with me. Three days later, she and Logan began dating. Although, to her, he called her best friend, but our therapist was adamant that he was in a romantic relationship with her, and he was. So to me, he called her partner. He texted her constantly. They spent every Sunday together, and even when I was having panic attacks and experiencing psychosis over the fact that someone who was supposed to be good to me was spending their time with someone who had assaulted me. It's th I'm fuck you. Fuck you. Leaned in for kiss, and you said no, and that's sexual assault? Bro, you got raped in broad daylight? Yeah, she, she leaned in for a kiss. Career over! <laughs> what is that? What the fuck, bro? No, oh, I'm gonna get canceled for this one. Yeah, it's a shitty thing to do. That's what I'll say. It's a shitty thing if you had a conversation, say explicitly, I want you to ask me to, to kiss because I don't know if I'm ready to do that yet. And then you just try to do it anyway, which I, but like, to say that she fucking like sexually assaulted you in broad daylight by leaning in for a kiss that was not reciprocated and immediately, like, stopped or whatever. Like, she didn't push you, she didn't fucking grab you or whatever. Like, what are you talking about? That's not what fucking rape is, dude. Get the fuck out of here. Am I wrong, chat? Am I fucking wrong? Am I am I being fucking nuclear here? Am I gonna get canceled for this? No, I mean, you know, to be honest, none of this happened is probably the right answer. This is probably an elaborate fan fiction. I don't think any of this even happened, but... I'm right. Yeah, that, that makes me mad. That, that kind of pulls me out of the character there for a second. That's infuriating. Ugh. Our therapist was adamant that he was in a romantic relationship with her. And he was. So to me, he called her partner. He texted her constantly. He spent every Sunday together. And even when I was having panic attacks and experiencing psychosis over the fact that somebody who was supposedly good to me was spending time with someone who had assaulted me was too much. He constantly took her side, and he began bringing her into our screaming match fights. He almost told me that she said I never do anything for him, so why should he do anything for me? And he agreed with her while screaming in my face. The fall of 2022 was the worst months of my life. We were rarely even sleeping in the same bed. I cried every day, all day. I screaming matches every night where he would be touching my nose when screaming in my face. I started packing bags, I don't even know how many times, and told him I was leaving, to which he would suddenly switch tones and beg me to stay, claiming he would change. And when that wouldn't work, he'd become scary. He'd tell me he wouldn't allow me to leave. I couldn't have money. Because look around, he made all the money. And I did nothing. He would tell me that my family wouldn't take me in because I'm queer. And I had no way to leave. One time, and I'm ashamed of this, I got in his face and screamed that this is what he does to me. And he pushed me hard into a wall, and I fell on the floor. To be honest, I can't even remember that moment from a first-person perspective. I completely dissociated. After he pushed me and fell- um, Dude, she fucking went into the third person. This bitch got pushed into Gears of War. <laughs> dude, she got pushed, and all of a sudden you can hear in the background, Duh! No! <laughs> what does that mean? I can't remember this from the first person. What is that? Like again, if that really happened, that's really sad. But what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> 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 
To be honest, I can't remember that moment from a first person perspective. Dude, Halo is over. It's done. I completely dissociated. After he pushed me, I fell on the floor. I got up and calmly walked to the bedroom and barricaded the door behind me. As it didn't have a lock. There was, however, a patio door in there too, and I didn't know it wasn't locked. So he came in, despite my pleas for some time alone, he was sobbing and begging me not to call the police or leave, because he would look so bad if I did. He said he was sorry over and over and kept blocking me from leaving. Once I had packed my bags, he wouldn't let me leave. I finally gave up, I slept on the couch. The next day it was like, it never happened. A couple days prior, he'd threatened to call the police because I was gently putting my hand on his chest and he was screaming in my face and I asked him to back up and he grabbed my wrist and threw my hand away saying he'd call the police for me putting my hands on him again and they'd believe him because I was fucking crazy. In October, I told him I was leaving. That he would... <laughs> no, I'm overdoing it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get in trouble. I'm in trouble. I want a little Joker mode there. I'm sorry. I can't imagine why they think you're crazy. Yeah, show them your vlog. This is just fucking crazy, dude. Um, in October, I told him I was leaving, and then he could either have a relationship with me or with Bunny. But my mental health was suffering, and I couldn't do it anymore. So it took him three days to decide I was the one he wanted. I believe it was on around Halloween when I drove him up to Olympia to break up with Bunny. He cried the whole way home, and that night, I'd made him do this. I just kept trying to stand my ground. No, I gave you a choice, and this is what you chose. Our therapist had to remind him of the multiple times I straight up said to Logan, this is not Piper's fault, and you need to stop telling him that it is. In a session, he would agree, but then as soon as the call ended. Wait, the call ended? Wait, the call ended? Wait. 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 Wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They had better help discussions? They were doing better help. As soon as th their therapy was on Discord. No fucking way. No fucking way. Oh no, they were doing couples therapy on Discord! Do the Zoom therapy! <laughs> what is happening? He began screaming at me, it's all my fault! And I took away his soulmate, and how dare I do this when I don't do anything for him! And somehow I was able to stand my ground. Dude, imagine this. Dude, time out. Imagine yelling at your wife like, you took my soulmate away from me, you stupid bitch. Like, what does that mean? How? Why are you married? What does that mean? Oh, Around this time, it was when the financial abuse was at its worst. I never knew where our money was going or what was happening. I just knew that most of the time my card was being declined. We were fighting about money constantly. Because he had some and you didn't. When he tried, he would blame me for not knowing stuff, for me not having access to our bank account. And I would say, okay, give me the password. And suddenly he'd have an excuse for how he couldn't remember it, and we'll get it to me later. But he would spread his arms, gesturing at our whole home, saying, look at all this. I did this, not you. You contribute nothing. I do everything. I would say, okay, I'll get a job. He responded with tears, sobbing, saying, I can't get a job. Do you know how bad it would look for me to make a disabled person work when he has a successful YouTube channel? The cycle continued. A couple weeks later, the scariest incident of our marriage. We were in Portland. It was night. We were walking. Up, uh, we were heading home from a club that he wanted to go to. Someone in chat was like really funny. I don't believe she was ever in a relationship with this guy. What proof do we have that they were actually married? Bro, could you fucking imagine? This is like a parasocial viewer who watched the YouTube. I mean, that's not true. There's no way. There's no way that's true. I would. I would quit. I would quit. I would quit rape review if I found out these people never even met. That would be. Why is she putting up with this? I don't know. Probably because it didn't happen. Like that's this probably isn't real. Uh, so there's probably like some completely different version of this story that is reality that's similar. And I'm sure there's like issues here. I'm I'm sure this guy isn't like the perfect husband or something like that. I'm not trying to. Again, I don't know this guy. I'm not gonna jump out and defend him and say that he's a good guy. I, how how the fuck would I know? All right. I'm just saying, this shit sounds like didn't happen for 10, you know? 
We need a deeper dive. Bro, we gotta investigate. Alright, well, actually... Can we get a response from this guy? I want to judge his body language. A couple weeks later was the scariest incident of our marriage. We were in Portland. It was night. I'm about to head home from a club. Suggested we went there in the parking lot. We were talking about our childhoods, and he said he'd been sexually abused by being punished for masturbating. I told him that wasn't sexual abuse. It was religious. Wait! Whoa! Whoa! What? Bro. He claimed he was sexually abused when he was punished for masturbating. And she said, Sir, that's not rape. Kissing in public, that's rape. Okay. Hey, I just want to check the pulse. Are the 2,000 fr like closest friends and family members okay? Why don't you like the stream if your brain is imploding right now with this epic sauce that we're, we're reading right now? We're, we're reading a fan fiction about rape. That's what we're reading, but thank you. This is a, these are real people, apparently. Thank you. Why don't you like the stream? How's that? Just... Hope you guys are okay. Um, if you want to... Uh, I, if you really are, um, sympathizing with Aaron Hernandez right now as we're streaming this, uh, hit the like button. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> fuck me, dude. This is insane. This is crazy. Um. He was close to my face. I could feel his breath. Wait, that sounds like Boogie. Like, let me feel your breath! Let me... You take my Mountain Dew? Let me feel your breath! <laughs> and spit got on me as he screamed. I calmly told him, please stop. There are people around. He screamed that he didn't care who saw. And I wanted to get out of my car. And he locked the doors and physically held me back from unlocking it and reaching the handle. And I said I was calling the police. And he took my phone from my hand. And I begged him to let me out. And I said, I don't want to ride with him and I'll find a way home. He screamed that he wouldn't allow me money or my phone. Or how will I get anywhere? I took my ring off and threw it on the floor. And I cried, begging him, let me out. He clenched his fist and it looked like he was going to hit me or grab me. When I flinched, he screamed, how dare you act like I would hit you? I would never do that. When the club manager came out and knocked on his window and Logan rolled it down, I smiled. I put on a charming voice and I reassured the manager. All was well. And he started driving home. The two-hour drive felt like a million. I stopped responding to him. I just looked out the window while I constantly screamed that I was abusing him by invalidating his trauma. He drove recklessly and I just wanted to be safe, so I apologized. I put my ring back on. I calmed him down. I held his hand the rest of the way home and the next day it was like nothing had happened. We'd become somewhat discussing the possibility of spending some time apart to give us some space, but Logan came to me with the idea, why don't we spend the month of December apart? I was like, yes! Yes, please! Please get me out! And I didn't know that he requested this time because he wanted to get back together with Bunny without my knowledge. So we spent most of 2022 apart, and that was when I realized I was happier alone than when I was with him. Up until this point, he had completely convinced me that I was the taker in our codependent relationship because I was sick. And that meant I always took from Logan, and he was always giving. I felt like such shit about myself. I felt like I was destroying his life by being sick, and he wouldn't tell me that I couldn't be mad at the concept, so he had to be mad at me. And eventually, I just believed him. During the time apart, I finally started questioning that. It was when I was in so much pain that I had to crawl across the floor that I realized I was happier without him. I'd rather crawl across the floor on my hands and knees than help him have me help him walk. To meet my pain without shame or blame was a new experience, and it felt so much better than what I had been living through. During December, Logan decided that it was time to be I was financially independent. He was no longer it was no longer his responsibility to pay for my medical bills, food, gas, or anything. He put a down payment on a car for me so that I had a mode of transportation and claimed it was a Christmas gift. He expected me to make monthly payments on the car by donating plasma twice a week until the $12,000 debt was paid off. Because once again, he didn't want to give me a job. So I began donating my blood for weeks until I was anemic. And that's how I paid for my pain medication and food and gas. Because our joint bank account was constantly overdrawn. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, she had to just 
donate twelve thousand dollars worth of blood, and then your cop. Sorry, I'm fucking not. <laughs> dude, she played. Dude, she really put her blood, sweat, and tears into a chat. I'm so. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. Oh God! What the fuck? Oh no! Oh God! <laughs> I get twelve thousand dollars with this one simple trick. Oh God! Twelve k in blood. How much is that? That's exactly one limited edition pinball machine, bro. That's how I'll make the. I'll buy the jaws with my blood. That's a great idea, chat. I'm gonna start donating my blood until I can buy the pinball machine. What is blood going for? Dude, why doesn't she just start streaming rape reviews? She'll make that in no time. Nobody can donate that. Dude, no one man could donate all that power. <laughs> oh, man. All right. How much more of this is there? Oh, my God, chat. You want to know where we are? <laughs> we're fucking we're fucking halfway through. I'm not kidding. We're halfway through the story. Oh, she took a creative writing class when she got out of this relationship. I'm so fuck me, dude. Wait, they got divorced. How the fuck? We're in 2022. How much could there be to write? Oh, uh, we need a new song. If we're going to get through this, we need a new song. All right, we'll, we'll switch after. What is this? I don't know. This is the Lena Raiden person who made. I'm going to go back to Resurrections. I think this is a good song. This is good for this story. Oh man. And it's not gonna ding me for copyright. Oh, oh man. Upon realizing I was happier alone and donating blood for my own money for once. <laughs> dude, what is this shit, dude? Did Chud get this far? Did anyone get this far to the point where she's literally like... No. No. No! Oh my god, chat! You know, um, Keffel's a psycho retardation? That new thing she says she has? Do you know what causes psycho retardation? Drug use. Bro! Dude, her psycho retard syndrome comes from her drug use. Am I blocked yet by the Piper? I thought this was her cosplaying as Frodo. I've written my story for y'all. Pooping and pissing, that's just what I do. What is this? Like, what's happening here? This is her account. Thank you for sharing. Like, I'm horrified to hear what he put you through. I'm so sorry, Piper. I wrote a long comment on your YouTube video. I'm so sorry you went through all this. Thank you for coming out with your story. Oh! Oh, oh, boys. Oh, it's Lily Marston chat. Do you remember Lily Marston and Jesse Smiles? Do you guys remember the lore? Oh, do you remember when Lily Marston was talking hella shit about your boy? Oh, God. I hope they buy into this shit. That would be funny. Oh, God. So let me so just to back up. All right. So she made a video saying that her husband ran off with their manager. In the first one. Now we find out in the longer version that she went polyamorous because he asked to. And then she, she just started fucking, dude. She like got, like she just ran through Tinder, all right? And then he was like, wait, oh my God, I don't want to be polyamorous anymore. Um, And then she's like, fuck you. And then she started dating Bunny. And then Bunny was like, I'm gonna kiss you. And she's like, no, you're not. And then she's like, okay, so you raped me, Bunny. And then Bunny's like, the fuck? Lol? Um... And then the guy's like, yeah, my wife's fucking crazy. Um, and like, yeah, she's like, yeah, she's fucking crazy. And then they started banging. Um, and then you were like, hey, only I can fuck Tinder. This is backfired on me. You stop fucking right now. And he's like, okay, I'll stop fucking. And then your sexless relationship kept going. And then he's like, I actually hate this. So I'm going to give you a bunch of money if you leave me alone. Um, or I'm not going to give you, I'm going to give you a car so you can drive around. Um, and then you're like, I don't want to be with you anymore. And then he went to go date the previous person. And you're like, you're cheating on me when you guys are literally in a polycule. 
and you're going back and forth at who's more jealous in the polycule. Like, this is why polyamorous relationships don't make sense. Like, if you're in the beginning of this situation, yeah, that guy is a steaming bitch or whatever. He's like, I want to be polyamorous so I can fuck people that aren't my wife. And then the wife gets, like, trained. Like, it's literally the episode of, um, uh, uh, it's literally the newest South Park where uh, Randy's like, I want to start an OnlyFans. And Sharon's like, okay, I'm going to pop my pussy for OnlyFans and I'm going to make 12,000 times what you're making when you just pull out your cock. And he's like, no way. And then he does, like he just does it, right? And then fucking Sharon's like, I don't want to do OnlyFans. I'm just doing it to prove to a point that I can do it better than you. Um, and that's like this, like, well, I'm just fucking because like you can't get any pussy and you wanted this open relationship. So then your husband started getting pussy and you're like, wait a minute. I don't want to be polyamorous anymore. But you didn't say it like that. You were like, I don't want that girl around. She's driving a wedge between us. The reality here is that if you guys weren't polyamorous, uh, most of this drama wouldn't have happened. Now, I mean, he could still be abusive for all I know. And that stuff would have to be sorted out if that's real. But like, um, this is just like a phantom relationship like these people whenever you turn around like you stole my soulmate from me when you're talking to your wife the wife who like literally married you because she's claiming she was terrified that like jesus wouldn't love her anymore because she sinned by having sex before marriage um now fast forward two years and she's in a polycule and she's like bisexual like what is happening here i don't understand this dude is this about Keffels? Probably. Eventually. Keffels is going to start a polycule with Tipster, and we're going to be doing this again. We're going to run it back. Oh, God. Upon realizing I was happier alone and donating plasma for my own money, I, I can't get over the blood thing. How had it, like, the blood thing? Jesus, fuck me, dude. I told Logan at the end of December I wanted a divorce. At first, he began to beg me not to and screamed, How dare I leave him? And it was like, I wasn't budging. He just calmly gave in. He agreed this was the best choice. And he told me he wanted to make videos of me. And told me he wanted out of the relationship a long time ago. But he didn't want to leave because of how people would perceive him for leaving a disabled person. He told me he was afraid of what I would say about him. Because apparently, I don't talk nicely about people who... And he trailed off and still didn't know that he'd been back in contact with Bunny. And I believe that I was the taker in our relationship... So I agreed that we'd still be friends and do things together. It was really weird, though, when he left and asked me for one last kiss. I felt full of disgust during that kiss. And why did you kiss him? I remember telling my friends and family members the most minute details of our separation. And everyone got really mad at him. And I don't understand why. I still thought I was the problem. No, you're manipulative and you were telling the least charitable interpretation possible. And then when people went, how did you stay with him? You were like, what do you mean? Aren't I the problem? That's what happened. That's 100% what happened. But January 9th, 2023, I moved into my own apartment and began to feel peace for the first time. Logan and I were still speaking amicably. But I was really weirded out. Wait, so you went to your religious family and told them about your polyamorous relationship quintuple? And they were like, damn, dude, this guy's pretty wacky. Weren't you, like, afraid they would disown you for having sex before marriage? So you're like, yeah, so anyways, I'm bisexual and we're in a polycule and I was banging tons of guys on Tinder and, uh, like, inside my wedlock, um... But, uh, that was all fine up until the point where, like, um, he started dating somebody I didn't like, and then I told him to stop, and then the, I'm, I'm picturing, like, Mother Mary being like, what? What are you talking about, woman? Must bathe in the holy water immediately! Like, I, I don't understand. I thought you were from, like, a fucking, like, a Christian household. Like, what was happening here? Jesus. Um. <laughs> the devil made me do it, yeah. The devil's less. Jesus. But I was really weirded out that he continued to say that I love you to me. I was terrified of starting anything with him, so I just kept saying it back. I was so manipulated, I told him I loved him every day. A couple of days later, I was unpacking my apartment and got notifications for Observe, and I realized I hadn't even been logged out of the account yet. I was getting login verification notifications for another Mac iPhone. Logan doesn't have it either. 
I knew it was Bunny. I texted him asking if I needed to do anything with the notifications. I was just trying to see if he would come clean, and he told me he was changing the passwords. I said, no, you're not. I know it's Bunny. He denied it. I told him I could see on his calendar that he'd hired her back two weeks earlier. He told me just log out of the accounts, and it wasn't my business what he did. I asked, why did you lie to me? He said he never did. And then I told him that things were no longer amicable, and I needed all my stuff back by midnight, or I was calling the cops for theft! Around 9 p.m., he dropped off maybe a quarter of my shit in the rain outside of my apartment building, and he never let me know he dropped it off. He was all soaked. This is where I began waking up to everything he'd been doing to me, how fucked up it all was. I began sharing things online, and he texted me back asking where to keep the shit off the internet because I was making him look bad. I said, if you want it to look good, then you shouldn't have acted the way you did. I'll share what I want. Most of you know the next few months went and I lived in Lacey, Washington. Washington? I don't know. And I worked at Starbucks. I met a lot of amazing people, and I had some of the most enjoyable months of my life. I met someone who was supposed to be just a hookup, and he's been here for a year now. And he's the softest, kindest, funniest person I know, and he loves me. And I know that he knows what the word means. In April, I had a mental breakdown and went into secular. <laughs> That's why you pre-read, Jot. That's why you're supposed to pre-read. I didn't pre-read. I'm sorry. That's just a whoo whiplash. Kaching whiplash. Whoa. Okay. Yoo. All right. Um. Oh, I wonder if that guy raped you too. Like Jesus. Okay. Um. Jesus. Okay. I had a mental breakdown. Woo. He was there, steady support until my mom arrived. After a few weeks, I moved back to my hometown in Wisconsin. I had the most incredible support from my parents and siblings. My parents housed me, fed me, took care of my dogs, found me a lawyer, paid my bills. This is the first year of my adult life where I felt constant love from those around me. I felt saved, heard, and supported. When things arise, like Logan demanding, I send him my filming and editing equipment. I've had my parents speak to him for me and have my back. I would have not gotten through this without their help. Shout out to my therapist as well. Dude, shout out to my therapist. Ayo. People who have been in abusive relationships will understand when I say that safety sometimes doesn't feel safe after so many years of chaos. It's an adjustment to move into peace and normalcy. What I thought was normal for so long was far from it, and I still struggle every day to not police my body language, to question if I'm imagining my pain or wonder if I'm being dramatic. During the divorce cool-off period that's required by law, Logan has been less than cooperative. After five attempts, I've finally gotten most of my stuff back, and although he's destroyed some of it by throwing glass bulbs to shatter over everything, he'd also said that he would do our taxes jointly. But then he decided to gaslight. Wait, what taxes do you have to do? You had zero income. Am I wrong? What taxes does she have to declare? Like, she said she got nothing in the divorce. She had no income. She had no job. What taxes does she need to do? The Starbucks taxes? You were asking your ex-husband to do your Starbucks taxes? Twitter art? The Twitter art Starbucks tax. The plasma taxes. You have to do taxes on your blood. The government wants a percentage of the blood. Like, I... Okay. Wait, again, that makes no sense, dude. I can't get a job because my husband told me that... <laughs> yeah, he's not gonna make his disabled wife work. So he brought up this genius idea. What if I strap myself to this fucking metal fucking chair and I just let them drain my blood? That way, when she tells the story... She had, and that sounds so much better than getting a job. Does anyone believe this? It's literally blood for the blood gods. Her argument was, I couldn't get a job because I don't want to make my disabled wife work. So she made your you made your disabled wife a blood slave. 
and made her donate plasma two times a week until she paid back her car. Blood is not taxable. Thank you very much, 6217X. This is so fucking stupid, dude. This is so dumb. Listen, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be real charitable here. If this guy sucks, I'm glad you got out of it. I'm really glad you got like a safe space and family that supports you. Uh, I'm glad that he was lying, I guess, and your family actually does love you and care about you. Um, and I hope they take away your internet connection and they remove your router and let you live your life in peace and harmony. Um, because this is so fucking crazy. Oh. All right. During the divorce cool-off period, I already read that part. Let's go to the next paragraph. Logan Paul does not deserve a platform, and he has no credentials, and he is dangerous. And so is his manager, Bunny. Thank you for reading. Please be safe and well. Wow. Wow, look at this chat. You know, I want more details and receipts about this before gathering my pitchfork. I'm really sorry to hear what this poor woman has gone through. Usually I can kind of see certain scandals coming, but this one gave me the impression of a dude who is kind of self-righteous and a little too willing to lean into pseudoscience, but otherwise unobjectionable. Agreed. Edit. They said in a pinned comment there's more info, and I think they're Twitter and Insta. Honestly, I haven't looked yet, though. A lot of journalist entries related to Piper's feelings about Logan in a polyamorous relationship with Bunny and him prioritizing time with Bunny or breaking agreements they had made to spend time with Piper. None of it really relates to what Piper said in the video. Yeah, I'm reserving judgment for now until more stuff comes out. I totally believe her that she's leaving a toxic, painful marriage, but whatever the details show, Observe seems to be an irredeemable monster or just a shitty husband to this one woman is yet to be seen. Uh, this is a very measured response for a subreddit. I gotta be honest with you. This is That's kind of how I feel. I'm, not, I'm gonna be real with you. Um, I don't. <laughs> okay. Uh, what is this? Uh, when I, my jaw dropped, I always looked into a new observe video, not because I'm such a believer in the whole thing, but I found them to be entertaining. However, I always lean in favor of the victims due to my own history of abuse. And I, oh, okay, I'm not gonna shit on that person then, if that's the case. Uh, I watched a video of someone reacting to this video about Colleen Ballinger, and I had trouble believing some of the stuff he said. Yeah, that's literally every body language video. I found this in a different community. Uh, what is this? Depp discussions. Oh, Johnny Depp. Um, hi, everyone. I posted here a few months ago about being married. Oh, no! Oh, no! Um, wait. Wait, I posted here a few months ago about being married and abused by a body language analyst, and today I finally divorced his ass. I'm speaking out about it, and I thought that you would all need to know the truth about someone who could so easily call Amber a liar while being an abuser himself. Oh. <laughs> Bro, there's no fucking way. <laughs> she wrote into a Johnny Depp subreddit to shit on- oh my god wait so she was like she was subtweeting her ex-husband and then she's like i'm me i'm actually dating this person oh no your video just came up my youtube feed and i immediately came here i remembered your comments earlier and i thought you might have been observed former spouse at the time i'm so sorry you had to deal with that I do remember your post on this sub six months back. Oh, this is the original rape review. Okay, let me get that up there. Um, the man with body language experts on you is a fraud. I strongly believe that it takes a special demented person with zero empathy to swindle the masses for personal profit. Again, that's actually a pr uh, that's true. I think anyone who's a body language expert is a pseudoscientist hack, so I kind of agree with that part. But um, he always came across as a misogynist to me. Chat, we don't give those vibes, right? One in the chat if we're not misogynist. Uh, I remember your post. I hope you're okay. Glad you divorced his ass. Thank you for being amazing. Like, this is all, like, we, this is, is anybody in here based? No, no one's based in this whole fucking post. Let's see. Um, let me see. Oh, here. What do we got this? Six. I was absolutely shocked when I saw this. Some of the things are similar to experiences I've had. Uh, no proof yet. Here, ooh. Given the most re recent post on your account, this is a really insensitive take. I run up to you with a bullet wound pointing at a guy running away. You, no proof that could be... What? 
They did a post that refers to proof, but nothing in those journalist pages addresses what they said in the video. In fact, some of it directly contradicted or complicated things they said in the video. Edit, they've deleted the post. Oh, that's frustrating. Uh, I guess I'm still the asshole for reserving judgment. No, you're the asshole for how you said it. Your dismissiveness. Or, well, they certainly won't say that about Nick DiOrio. Nick DiOrio is not dismissive. I agree with you, and I don't think you're an asshole. I still think the journal, the journalist had uh, pinned on the Instagram. I don't know where they deleted stuff from. They made a new post and pinned it. Those journalists were not there. In the, okay, so that's that. Uh, one more. What is this? Hmm, why would they delete? Okay. Uh, this is the original post of when she went to the subreddit Dep Delusion. Uh, here, I'll give the people what they want. I know you wanted this. I know you little fuckers, you little, you little suckers, you wanted this right now. Um, hold on. I know you little, you little monsters wanted to hear this. Wait, that's two different accounts? Oh, maybe they were on an alt. Here. I'll give you a little shits what you wanted. Hi, I'm new here, but this... Okay. Uh, we're going to do this once or twice so we know it's good. Um, do we have a song that we could play in the background? Uh, how are we doing tonight? Just under 2,000 concurrent viewers. Loving it. 6, 600 likes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Closest friends and family. We haven't even gotten to Wilbur Soot yet. And we've been going for two and a half hours. Uh, we have at least another hour in the tube, uh, which I'm very happy about. Um, because the Wilbur stuff is fairly interesting. We're probably going to jump from Wilbur into the next one. Why did Willie Mac Show just invite me to play Steam, Age of Empires? Willie, I can't play Age of Empires right now. I'm hosting Rape Review. I don't even have that game. Um, let me see. What's a, what is the tipster song? I think I can find this. Um, is the AI voice ready yet? Let me generate it one more time, just so we're getting a cleaner rip. Hi, I'm new. Yeah, that's better. Um, where was the old royalty-free hip-hop channel that everyone used to use when we were getting when we were up there? Is it CMF Productions? Popular? Uh, is this it? No, this wasn't it. All these channels look the same. Hey, Game and Witch, how you doing, fam? How you doing? What's up? What's like the dun 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 dun? I don't, what is that fucking song, dude? I used to use it in my videos, and he took it. He took it from me. He stole it from us. View your channel. Um, it's definitely in here. Okay. Oh, we Alex was and when I found out I asked everybody. Yeah, I need that song. Did I did I put that here? Contributions featured contrib No, I didn't. Fuck. Does anyone know this song? How long everybody knew? They were like, I've known for months. I've known for months about the fact that everybody here is a sexual oh. YouTube channel. I would like to be Toastify. Hey! Alright, we got the new tips to re new tips to review. Thank you. It is CFM, okay. It's immortal, yeah. New here, but this sub. Hi, I'm new here, but this sub keeps popping up for me because of the body language content, and I I have to say it is so. Hold on. Hi, I'm new. here. All right. And all right, we're ready. Ready. Hi, I'm new here, but this sub keeps popping up for me because of the body language content. And I have to say, it is so comforting to see a community so staunchly against body language experts. I was married to a fairly popular body language YouTuber that many of you have called out. However, I'm going to try to seem vague because I've been threatened with a defamation trial. Ironic, I know. He gained popularity with the Herd vs. Depp trial, and I just remember constantly disagreeing with his opinions because I recognized the signs of abuse and he wanted to brush them all off as her being manipulative. When the Gabby Petito case happened, it was the same story. I completely disagreed with his take, but he published his version anyways and then took no accountability when he was wrong. Unsurprisingly, he himself is an abusive narcissist. 
Throughout our entire relationship, he would use body language to gaslight and manipulate me into bending to his will. Near the end, he became physical and more psychologically violent than I could ever describe. He believes himself to be special and superior to others because of his skill. When I would call him out, he would scream in my face to not compare him to the abusers he calls out. Because what if his fans found out? He's an incredibly dangerous person, and I have no doubt so are the rest of these so-called experts of a made-up science. I can't wait for the day when the public opinion shifts on them, and they finally have consequences. Anyway, just wanted to thank you all for sticking up for those who have experienced the violence that comes from body language readers. Why was that so good? That was only three runs. That's so crazy, bro. Holy, yeah, we're gonna do a shot stream after that one, dude. <laughs> oh, fuck, I, I, I jumped out of it. Um, hey. Hey, can you like work a little better for me? Cause I need like this job, this joke to land. This joke has to land. Thank you. The only language I need is your body, Keffels. I want to suck your dick and have you blow off in my mouth, daddy. Uh daddy, daddy, spank me, daddy, fuck me, daddy. But spank me, daddy. I'll be home by 10. I can't wait to have all 8.5 inches of you. I'm a horny fucker. Dude, all these new sound bites are insane. Like, the community is so jover, bro. I think, didn't Star we got one too? Where did Star go? Oh, God. What do we got here? Uh... Oh, no. I don't think she put mine in there. Yeah, she made one of me. Oh, God. Yeah, we have so many new sound bites, bro. <laughs> Black boy. <laughs> okay, buddy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, God. How are you doing there, buddy? Uh, did you hear any of the lore? We got so we got them all. We got everything you need. Uh, oh here, I get white pussy. Okay, what I get fuck? more white pussy than any other. I love that one because I'm quoting Bunty King, and you hear Star just go, "What the fuck?" Like in the background of that one. That's so good. That's such a good one. All right, chat. I think we we've turned Piper into two hours of content, and I think that that is amazing. Um, now we're gonna I'm gonna be honest with you, chat. This is gonna blow your mind, all right? But I am the only person in this whole fucking community who has no idea what happened with fucking what is it? Pay money, Wubby? No. Um, what is who? Who's in the title? Uh, Wilbur Soot. I haven't watched anything about Wilbur Soot so far. I am going in raw, baby. All right. I am going in with no protection. We are going into. We are kissing this drama with no consent, chat. No consent to kiss. Here we go. Wilbur Soot, it is time. <laughs> Here we go. Let's get in there. This is apparently a live stream that was done. Uh, and I don't know if she names Wilbur in this. This is like the, the, the first. Like light jazz in the back. Bro, she didn't have her fucking audio track set up. Rookie mistake. Liar. No, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <clears throat> oh, she does in this one. I, I remember seeing a tweet. The only thing I saw was her saying a tweet where I, like, just because I don't name him doesn't mean I don't want to or something. I don't know. Maybe that was before all this. 
Hello. Oh, she dances around. I don't around know if you can it. even oh. hear it. I put on like light jazz in the background because it seemed awkward being quiet, but I don't think you can hear it, so I'm just gonna turn it off. Um, hello. <laughs> Um, welcome. We are in emote only because I'm just going to be talking today. Is she wearing and Beats by go. Dre? Okay, that's kind of fire. Do you guys remember Beats by Dre? Dude, I, I still have my pros. The Beats pros. And I have some. I have a, a pair of studios and a pair of solo HDs. Bro, those were like fashion statements. The audio quality wasn't even very good. But Dr. Dre had them. I, I used to love them, bro. And then they went to Apple and everything was like space gay and fucking cringe pink. And it was like all these stupid Apple colors that didn't really matter or whatever. And I miss like the old, like, you know, the cherry red ones and like the black and, and the white. Bro, Beats are fire. I love them. I used to, dude, I literally had a headphone popping out of my shirt every day at school in middle school when I was, I had my Beats tour, not tours, tours were the LeBron James ones, right? Or maybe they weren't. I don't know. I had the fucking in-ear ones, not the shitty hundred dollar ones. Um, but yeah, I would always get and I would have the Best Buy warranty. So I'd like fling them around and shit and they'd break and you would just get to go back to Best Buy and you'd be like, yeah, take another one off the rack. And I'm like, OK, so like every few weeks I'd have a new color because I would break them. I love beats, dude. They're fire. I'm going to go. Um, yeah, it was very, very low. There's there's no need. I just it felt weird leaving you in silence, but I'm here, so. Dude, Skull Candy was cool too. I, I use Skull Candy sometimes. I would whenever I didn't want to bring the beats around or whatever, I'd bring them out. And honestly, the beats didn't really sound all that much better than the fucking shitty Skull Candy ones. It was just because the name was on them and it was like a socially relevant thing. It's got you know what's kind of the new beats um for the current generation are those stupid Stanley Cups. The only Stanley Cups I know are the ones the Rangers probably won't win again this year and make me very sad. But like it's it's like there's always that one brand when you're in school or whatever that's like super chill and like right now it's Stanley Cups, and like you can just go buy a fucking like a uh, there's like tons of cups that do the exact same thing probably better uh, like I mean but you have to have the Stanley one because that's the one that gives you social credit in high school. It's so funny because none of that shit matters. It's like the second you guys get out, you're literally gonna be like, what the fuck? Why do I use this stuff? Except for me, I was like, God damn it, I love Beats by Dre and I use them all through college. Hello, um, I wanna talk about something today that I'm um, very nervous. I feel sweaty. I had a sweater on, I had to take it off. Um, I'm gonna try and just, I wrote down pretty much everything I think that I wanna say to keep track of sort of all the points that I wanna make sure I don't forget anything. So I will be reading from something um, a good portion of the time, but not 100% of the time. Um, and I just wanted to make sure I got all of my thoughts down in words ahead of time. I'm, I really like writing down my thoughts. So I did that. Um, Oh, hold on. Can I so what did she do? Gather everything but the evidence? All right. I don't want to be... I legitimately don't know anything about this story. So now, the other one was kind of crazy, like satirically crazy. I, 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 we were listening to this on stream together, and the woman was talking about how she was, like, being bled dry, quite literally. So obviously, I'm going to take a different approach to this one, because I guess this one is slightly more grounded. Um, so we're not going to meme this one as hard. Off. I think that maybe we turn ads off today. How do I make that happen for just today? Um, I should have that already. I should have that already. I actually don't even know how to make that happen. You know what? That's just gonna have to be that way. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm all good. Um, yeah, okay. Today's just gonna be talking. Uh, I'm just gonna start reading from what I wrote and go from there. I have a really big coffee. I'm gonna take a swig. Taking a swig of coffee. And I have my water and I'm gonna take a swig of that. <laughs> Dude, Keffel's like, I'm just going to take a swig of Coke. <laughs> Not the drink, though. I'm gonna I, just, I just need a little stem, you know? Just a little stem. Oh, my God. I got hit by a car. Bro, he just fucking... I just got... Oh, bro. I just got fucking um, McSkilleted. Family of five. I have always liked telling my different experiences that I've had um, in dating because it feels important to me to share... Nick, how hard is it to turn off ads? Dude, I'm never, bro. Never gonna turn him off. Dude, <laughs> it, 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 it hurts my soul. What I've learned and maybe help other people to not make the same mistakes that I have before. I'm 30. I've dated a lot. I've gone on a lot of dates. I keep trying. Oh, she's saying she can't turn. Oh, no, I know. I was joking. I was joking. I was like, because obviously you were asking how hard is it to do. Uh, yeah, so if I go here in my YouTube, is she on Twitch or YouTube? So if I go to edit and I go to monetization, I can hit, oh, schedule mid-rolls, and then you can change it to insert manually, right? And that will stop the scheduled mid-rolls. I'm 99% sure that's how you do it. 
Um, Otherwise, then I don't know if it's not the case. And then she's 100% right. It is really hard to do. But I imagine it was just she didn't realize before the stream started. If I'm being ultra charitable, she probably legitimately went, oh, fuck, that looks terrible that I'm doing ads on this fucking stream. Because YouTube sets it by default to every 15 minutes somebody gets an ad. I think I made it higher so it's not as gay but you guys never get ads on my streams because i do ultimate rape review so i get demonetized fucking instantly so there's nobody here who got an ad if i got an ad that means i haven't been edgy enough and i haven't destroyed my ad sense for this episode it's twitch so it's hard to turn off ads oh okay unfortunate that a lot of my dating history uh there were a lot of bad people that tried to manipulate or control me um, uh -oh. but that's not to say that every person that I dated has treated me poorly. Okay. Okay. I like what I'm hearing so far. Um, I don't know. The preempt of like a lot of my ex-boyfriends are terrible is a little weird. Maybe at boyfriends and girlfriends. I don't know if this person's bi or, or what they're into, but, um, all right. So not every boyfriend was bad. Okay. Um, some people just weren't the right people. Um, okay. and speaking okay. out about my bad experiences has never felt as important as it does right now because silence has always brought me peace. And this time it feels like my silence is not keeping my peace. It's only keeping somebody else's peace. Um, and I never thought that I could be the kind of person to end up in a situation like I did. I've never thought that could happen to me. And so for me, this is important because it could help anybody else see the signs sooner than I did, um, okay. or hopefully avoid a similar situation entirely because the- Hey, listen, so far everything I've heard right now, like I, I'm not, instantly like oh fuck this person so i don't know Maybe we'll see what happens Whew. the truth is it was dangerous um there were a lot of things wrong in this relationship that um i endured some pretty terrible treatment um and i might touch on some things here and there okay. about that but um if i feel like it's all right well I, I don't think a might should be if you're trying if your objective here is to like help other people and stuff like that i don't know if a might you should probably say what happened I, isn't that the point of the stream important to the overall context but what i want to stay focused on is this specific She's priming the abuse i don't know why when i hear like priming the abuse i'm thinking like she's activating the fucking mortar like she... <laughs> like it's about to go off issue um and the things that happened matter of factly and the things that people saw and witnessed in our circle um it took me 10 months after to heal and i spoke with multiple therapists and tried different forms of therapy um i tried somatic therapy that one was actually really good for me <laughs> um because that one actually helped therapy buzzword um again i don't know this is you know honestly though i shit on therapy and stuff like that all the time this is the first person who said they went to therapy and they like said more than i went to therapy isn't that crazy is that not the first time you've ever heard someone say like yeah i went to therapy and then the conversation didn't immediately end and they provided a slight bit more information to me release a lot of um built-up anger i was having over the last year um but the anger that i was feeling was for myself because um i felt like every time nick pauses you can see her flashing back to the war like what the fuck i should have known better i felt so stupid at myself for um sort of just staying through all of this um and I shared my story with a lot of friends after I started talking to therapists and I was like, so this thing happened and I, I wasn't really sure. It just seems weird now to me looking back and all of them told me exactly what was happening in the words that I was too afraid to use. Um, and I was being hurt in my last relationship. And it took me all of that time to see it through that lens. Um, I even posted an anonymous story to Reddit that I have now deleted with an anonymous account. But in posting that, I found a dozen other stories that were exactly like mine, exactly the same way. Um, and all of the comments said exactly the same thing. Um, I sent you my artist representation of what happens to this. What happened in this here all? Let me see. I don't know. So far, I kind of feel bad for this person. Apparently, that's going to be ripped out of me, but... I can kind of I can kind of see this so far. Oh. All right. Um so this is what a uh, apparently an artist represented representation of what we're seeing right now. All right, anyway, let's keep going. And I was so mad at myself because I was lying too, um, at a certain point to protect this person because I knew that if I told my friends the truth, it'd make him look really bad. Um, 
I didn't think that I would cry. And I practiced saying all of this and I didn't cry, but it's easier to practice it when no one is listening. Um, but he always cared more about how it looked. And that was really important, not what was true. Um, and it was really subtle. When I hear about, um, when I hear about physical abuse, I think of hitting. I think of hitting and punching. Um, so I thought that this wasn't violent enough um, to be abuse. <laughs> Uh, I thought that it was just like a constant accident that he kept hurting me, um, but he's not hitting me. And it didn't start as something that he did to hurt me. Uh, he had this habit of biting, which is so weird to me now, but. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? This guy's Minecraft Mike Tyson. Come on, bro. What the, wait. <laughs> wait, hold on. Dude, this is him having sex. <laughs> Dude, you're about to have sex. And this, this, this guy just like, what's going on? Oh, we're going to fuck. What's going on? Hey. How you doing, girl? Like, <laughs> Dude, he's a fucking biter. No, he's teething. You don't get it. Oh, Jesus Christ. He said that he had had this habit since he was a kid. And even his Dude, he's a vampire. He's, he's Camden Gerard Davis. His mom said that that was true and he said it was just affectionate and that that might have been i mean i think that that might have been true maybe at the start but i also feel that i have good reason to believe that every part of it was a lie but that's just my personal opinion um and i had no problem with just Wait, biting. That is it. He has this habit since he was a kid and even of biting which is so weird to me now but he said that he had had this habit since he was a kid and even his mom said that that was true and Wait, his mom said that he like bit people it's not a dog, dumbass. You train your kid not to bite people. What do you... Yeah, you know, he's had this problem. He's been biting people for as long as I've known him. I don't know, bro. Take him to the vet. If my dog was biting people, I would. it would, it would have to get put down. Like, what are you talking about? What? She's 30? Oh, how old is he? Like, is, does he bite people? He's got that dog in him? And he said it was just affectionate. And is that, he that, rabid? Like, what? That might have been... I mean, I think that that might have been true maybe at the start, but I also feel that I have good reason to believe that every part of it was a lie, but that's just my personal opinion. Um, and I had no problem with just fighting. That isn't even the most uncommon thing. Um, yes! But he did. Yes, it is uncommon. People don't bite people. What are you talking about? That was the f only thing I know about this story, is that the guy's a biter. What is he? Is he like 25 years old? 27? He's 27. He's 27 years old and he bites people? And the implication here is it's not sexual. Like just a sexual thing. Right? Because I thought it was like, oh, when he's fucking someone, he's like, to get off, he needs to like bite them. Like break skin and then he, he beats off and it's over or whatever. Right? Um, that's what I thought hearing it. But supposedly his mother knew about it. So he just bites people. He had a safe word. It's definitely sexual. Yeah, that's. I guarantee it happened sexually. But if it was just a sexual thing, why would his mom know about it? He mentioned something early that I should have taken as a red flag, um, and he wanted to make sure. Wait, that you're thinking about? Oh, I should have took that as a red flag. He bites people. Am I crazy? If someone bit me and I went, "Why did you bite me?" and they said, "Oh, no, you can ask my mom." I've been biting people for a really long time. Would that satisfy you? Like, would that satisfy anyone? Ever? I was okay with him biting me because he didn't want- What? What? Early that I should have taken as a red flag. Um, and he wanted to make sure that I was okay with him biting me because he didn't want me to come back later and say that he abused me, which I thought was really weird considering he had never hurt me before. Because he's biting you. And that makes perfect sense to me. Other than the biting. The biting still doesn't make sense to me. But it makes perfect sense. It's like, hey, listen, are you okay with me biting you? Yes. Okay, because I don't want... Because you know this isn't an, like a, an aggressive thing. I just bite people. And she's like, yes. But that's kind of weird. This is weird. These people are weird. These are weird people. So he bites people. And she's like, all right, I'll let you bite me. But now, in hindsight, I think it was weird that you bit me. Why are they biting? Why are they biting? 
And so he's a biter. Why would I call it abuse? And why was he thinking about that? And I thought he was being sweet, checking on me to make sure that I was still comfortable. Um, but of course I was because he hadn't hurt me. And why would I think he ever would? Um, is, is he an animal? What is going on? He bit off more than he could chew. Exactly. Uh, uh, Astro health. And then he did for the first time by accident. Uh, and I don't specifically remember the actual first time that he did. I think it was consensual. No, no, no. Okay. Take the sexual element out of this. I understand that we have to talk about this because it's fucking rape review, right? But even from like a casual, why is he biting people? Like, what is he doing to stop biting people? That's that's my first question, because biting people is not normal. So if you have to have a safe word with your girlfriend to make sure the biting is still consensual, what is he actively doing to prevent biting people at 27 years old? You know, like he has a chew toy. Like, yeah, like what is he? What is his response when I get to it needs to have a paragraph of why the biting is weird. Like people are just writing past it like, oh, no, no, you don't. No, the problem is the abuse. It's like, yeah, but the problem starts with the biting. Uh, it definitely starts with the biting. That's the first thing I need to know the answer. Nothing. He's rich. He can bite all the women he wants. Well, apparently his luck has run out on that. Too one. hard by accident because I didn't think that it would be significant. Um, I thought that it would only happen once. And he started biting me more and more over a period of time, sort of throughout the whole relationship. And accidents of him biting too hard and really hurting me happened more and more frequently accidents of him biting too hard honey you're biting down a little harder than you said you would i'm so sorry i i can't help myself i just bite what and then she got on stream and she's like listen i'm starting to think that this might have been something different i'm starting to think this might not be what i was thinking yeah because your 27 year old boyfriend was biting you am i fucking does anyone here know any biters anyone there are almost 2,000 people watching right now okay there's 1900 people watching do any of you have any biter friends that just they can't stop biting Yes, your mom. Good one. I bite stuff, but not other people. Well, you know what? You, you'd never bite other people. They're too fragile. Um. <laughs> um, but he always seemed genuinely sorry, and he decided that he didn't want to keep accidentally hurting me. Um, so we were this guy plays Minecraft and bites women. <laughs> like, what is going on? Use a safe word. Um, so he could learn where my... And his friends were like, yeah, you know, this guy is a fucking weirdo. He's been biting people for quite a while. No one's like, hey, dude, you need to stop biting people. Apparently all his friends came out to denounce him after this girl came forward about it. But nobody was like, hey, I keep going to Minecraft conventions with this guy and he keeps fucking biting people as we're walking through the halls. Like, what? what's going on with that? Like, Are, are you, going to, you going to therapy, man? Like, you're going to... You're doing some kind of hypnosis thing, you know, like your body language is saying you're hurting me. You know, it's it's a little weird. What? That's where my pain tolerance. Yeah, he just turns around. And he's like, I'm hungry. It's ended. Uh, and it's some Jeffrey that out, Dahmer like, flow. Out now doesn't sound like that's not very sound logic. Um, but at the time, I thought he cared about not hurting me. Yeah, he's but territorial. But like, yeah, seriously, like, what if he what if he was like, oh, I need to mark my territory. So he'd lift his leg and urinate on you just because he's affectionate with you. Like, oh, look at you. You're so cute. And then he pulls out his leg and pees all over you. Would that be a social... Well, he just nibbled on my arm. That's not a big deal. But if he urinated all over in a pool of fucking shit in your bed, or he, like, shit the bed every time because he was like, yeah, you know... Then all of a sudden, people would be like, this guy's got a real fucking problem. Like, why did the biting go on for so long? In reality, it's like, why are you biting so hard? And why do you have to bite so hard? And it Why do you have to bite at all? You're wrong. You're wrong. You are wrong, ma'am. Why do you have to bite so hard? Why do you have to bite at all? Be that hard of a problem to stop. Um, that shouldn't be that hard. And he disguised it as this really quirky part of our relationship and was so comfortable sharing it with his friends to the point that he would do it in- So he would tell all of his friends that I bite my girlfriend and they're like, that's so cute. Join my Minecraft server. 
front of them. He thought it was this really funny story to tell and a good bit to take my arm and bite me in front of everybody until I literally shout in pain. Um, and then I have to laugh it off because I'm so embarrassed and I don't want to cause a scene in front of all of our friends. And then why did you stay? After all of that, why didn't you just leave? And I'm sure everyone was a little bit uncomfortable, but as long as all right, I was- well, we're jumping ahead. Maybe she'll say that, honestly. Saying that it was fine. Nobody really felt like they needed to be concerned, and that's not anybody's fault, because I was lying. <laughs> I was lying, and it wasn't fine, because I would go home later, and I'd tell him how uncomfortable I was, how much I didn't like being hurt all the time. And I needed him to really stop biting so hard. I didn't like it, and I tried telling him over and over again, because he asked him to stop again. This time he said, this is who he is. He isn't going to change. <laughs> then why are you still dating him honey you need to stop biting me i do this i'm a biter karen i'm a biter i bite that's what i do that's why you started dating me from the beginning no but you gotta stop biting for our relationship i like chewing that's what i do like what okay those were his words and i remember a lot of specifically his words about certain things especially at the end um because I'm good at remembering words, and especially his wording, I became really good at- This guy's got an oral fixation. Bro, could you imagine getting oral sex from a girl who's got a biting thing? Imagine she- like, alright, maybe not her, because she's accusing him of someone of abuse, but imagine you're dating a girl, and she's like, sorry, teehee, I just bite people. <laughs> Bro, that relationship would end in like 15 minutes, dude. If you reverse roles on this and you make the girl the biter, this is the only time it would be like crazy going the other way, dude. I'm sorry. It's like, no, teehee, sorry, I bit down too hard. No, relationship over immediately. Remembering because he was constantly contradicting himself, and I would notice, but most of the time it wasn't worth picking a fight over. And, but he would fight me on it sometimes because I would I would point it out, and. Uh, he would insist that he had never said the thing that he said. He definitely did say. And then he would say something like, how are you so sure you're remembering correctly? Why are you always right? Um, and he definitely said the things that I heard him say and other people heard him say. So he had now at this point weaponized the safe word and was using it to ensure that I was hurt and on a constant basis. And he wasn't sorry anymore. Um, I couldn't even tell you the last time he had apologized for doing it anymore because now sometimes he would bite me and I would yell out the safe word because it hurt so bad. And he'd clamp down even harder. And just for a second, just for good measure, before letting- All right, it totally, this, if that's real, if there's any part of that that's real, it has to be sexual at that point. I, I, but like- Go, uh, and sometimes I'd say the safe word and he'd grind his teeth down on my skin. And sometimes he'd smile after, um, like a gloating grin. And during this time, I was filled with so much anxiety all the time that I was constantly nauseous, gagging daily, um, on occasion throwing up because of the pit that was in my stomach. I never told him about that though. I was going and running away quietly to throw up in the toilet and rejoin our group of friends. Um, but I felt so unwanted and ignored. Um, and I would tell him that. And then he would reassure me that he wanted to be together and he loved me. He loved me more than I loved him even. He would always insist that that was true. Like that, I love you, I love you more. Dude, but all right, there's like a lot of stuff that I could, I could fucking, we're talking about that last person. That last person was like delusional. Nothing that he said made sense, right? The last person from the previous drama. But like when people say, okay, well, I felt like I was trapped in this relationship. I didn't know how to get it. I actually feel pretty empathetic for people like that. Like I get it. I, I get not being able to uproot your life. I get feeling pressured to be in a place like with stuff like that and like, and put up with certain quirks or whatever, because maybe you'll get better and you, and you really want it to get better. You don't want to leave this person. You want this person to be good. You want this person to get back to the way they used to be. They've changed and, and that's messed up everything. Right? And you're like, well, this person was so cool before, and I had such a good relationship with them before, maybe I could again. And they get trapped in that loop or whatever, especially young people. This is super common for people in their early 20s, 20, 21, 22. You're like, I mean, people get old, they start to change. They're, they're going through college. They're no longer the person that you knew uh, when they were 19 or anything like that. And, and, and you're latching on to the fact that like, hey, we used to have something really good. Maybe we could have something again. But he bites you. And he's been doing that since you met him. The only thing that changed is now he's biting harder. You should not be dating someone who bites you. It's not like, you know, uh, like his career, his platform, blah, 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 or he's become cold to me. It's that he started biting me harder. 
This makes no fucking sense to me, dude. I, why would you date someone who bites you? He was like really serious about it. The um, thing is, he supposedly grinded his teeth in, and that would cause gashes in her skin, not bruises. Then this is a really easy thing to prove, right? There must be like dozens of photographs of grotesque fucking images. And looking back, I do believe that the way I was. Jalen. I'm definitely the type of person that would let someone bite me and then eventually realize it was weird in hindsight. Yeah, but that's like, that's my point. Thank you. Because I don't think a normal person would find themselves in that position. I can understand if you would, but like, that's self-explanatory. No offense. But like, that, I feel like that's the archetype person that would have this problem swept off my feet at the beginning of this relationship was 100% love bombing. Um, and we were friends for a time. Um, at least people would have thought that actually, but I use the word friend very loosely because um, we had actually never spoke to each other outside of group chats. We were in together when like a handful of times throughout the, the whole time that we knew each other, um, but did not talk to each other. So I wouldn't have even called him my friend until he found out I was single, waited a few weeks to reach out. And then we started a friendship and then that friendship turned romantic. And then he made these huge romantic gestures. He wrote me the most beautiful love letter that I had ever read. Um, he called me his soulmate. He talked about forever one month in. He told me- Chat, pull this. Do we believe in soulmates in this chat? Does anyone here think that soulmates are real? Do you think that you have a soulmate out there to meet? And why would your soulmate not be in North Korea? That's my question. Why would your soulmate live in like Arkansas? Why wouldn't they live in like Vietnam, you know? You ever think about that? You ever think like, God, I'm so lucky that my soulmate lived down the block from me. <laughs> Dude, my, your soulmate is below the, like, is, is a serfdom in the caste system and you'll never meet them. <laughs> he hadn't been in a relationship in five years. He thought he could never find love again before he met me. He said he wanted to, someone to grow with. He wanted to be a dad. He had all his names picked out and I didn't have a preference because I, my feeling of it is that the timing is right and with the right person, I could. Um, but if that doesn't work out in time or the time, you know, I, I'm not super pressed about it. Um, but I started opening my mind up to the idea with him because it's raid. Are we getting raided? I see raid, but I didn't see anyone raid me. It seemed so important to him. Like, that's another thing, dude. Someone just said this in chat. Uh, Tom Gall, Tom Gold. Um, like this guy, based off of this in interaction, again, I don't, I haven't read his statement yet. I legitimately don't know what he said. Okay, I, I heard that, like, his statement was bad. I haven't read it myself. I've heard from other people. But here's my shit, right? This guy, I, I, I he has to show proof that he's getting help working on the biting. Biting is not normal, 27 years old. I don't care what tism you have. Okay, there's no justification for fucking biting grown adults. They, they kill a dog for doing it twice. You shouldn't get away with it because you're a fucking human. Okay? Um... Why would you want this guy to be a dad? What if he fucking bites your baby? What if he bites his kid? Why are you not thinking of shit like this? Why is this normal in your friend? Why? Oh, teehee, my friend bites people. He's quirky. What if he bites your son or your daughter? Then you get him put down. Yeah, I mean, like, he's got rabies, bro. And... I kept trying to talk to him to figure out where he was later on when I could tell things like were declining. And um, now all of a sudden he's telling me he's not sure he wants kids at all. In fact, he has never been attached to the idea of kids. Um, and I told him that isn't what he said before. And he said he's allowed to change his mind. And I'm of the opinion that in a relationship, there are a few things that you are not actually allowed to change your mind without letting your partner know. I think that kids is one of them. It wasn't even important to me. Um, and I think no, you can change your mind on kids, but yeah, I agree that you should probably say again, you're not married. If you're getting married and you marry your wife and you're like, by the way, I didn't mention this before we got married, but I'm like super not into the thought of having kids. That's fucked. Um, but changing midway through like, I mean, that's a good, you can leave, right? You know, she, so this person bites you. They don't share the same worldview as you. They don't want to have kids with, like with you. And that's something that seems pretty big for you. So naturally you broke up right bridge is one of them so i brought that up next and i asked if he still wanted marriage he said he wanted to marry me and then he said now i'm not the quote i'm not the commitment guy you know that 
Okay, I didn't so know now that. he doesn't want to marry you. All right, he's back. He's walked off the marry thing as well. Okay. Why are you dating me? <laughs> in fact, he was telling me the exact opposite every day. Uh, he would tell me he still wanted to be together. He wanted to work on all of the problems. He wanted to, like, he wanted me at the end of everything. He did not want to break up. He made that very clear. And uh, I have, though, caught him in lies before, but usually it was small stuff. And I, again, I didn't want to, it wasn't anything that ever seemed worth rocking the boat over, uh, which isn't normal for me. You know what's, someone said that maybe he just um, didn't want to be with her. He saw he was hurting her. And I don't believe that because uh, I don't think everyone is altruistic when this shit happens. You know what this sounds like to me? He wanted her to leave, but he wanted her to do it on her terms. Um, because he was probably too much of a pussy to break up with her. And I, dude, young couples, uh, even, I guess these people are my age, but I mean, I guess I've been in situations like this before. Um, or at least I've, I've had friends that have had situations like this before. A lot of these people just don't want to, like, man up and actually do the deed, you know? They gotta, like, they gotta get out of this one way or another, but you gotta do it. Uh, I'm not good at breaking up with people, so I do it over text message, or I'm not good at breaking up with people, so I just, you know, if, if it feels like it's your thought, then it's less, you know, less traumatic for me, you know? And a lot of people are like that, especially people who are probably fairly terminal online. Um, I imagine this is a, like, an autistic Minecraft YouTuber trait. I hate lies. Um... And yet I ended up. Lying. I don't want to hurt you, boo hoo. Meanwhile, you're already texting three other girls for him. So, uh, but he had lied about big things, and he had also been caught lying by his friends numerous times. So this is something that he feels is acceptable to do. And <laughs> I don't want to hook up with her anymore, so I bite her really hard until she leaves. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Maybe that's not true. I don't know. Everything reached a breaking point when he was about to leave for an extended period of time. We were not going to see each other very much. A few days out of every few months, um, and now suddenly he is dumping all of these problems that he has been having feelings about all of this time later. Um, at one point, he said he's been feeling this way a couple months. At another point, he says he's been feeling this way for six months, immediately contradicting, him, contradicting himself in the same conversation. And with no time to do anything about it, I arrive, the one of, <laughs> never mind, I'm going to get to something later, but uh, I literally arrived for three days for this conversation to happen and then leave. Um, my cat just woke up and she's not usually awake right now. Hi, my love. It's really close to her dinner time. I should have fed her early. Everybody gets mad at shit like this, but it's probably just like it's a nervous tick. Like, oh, because uh, like, you don't you obviously don't want to talk about the stuff you're talking about. And then it's like, oh, my cat woke up. Oh, good. I have something else to talk about for like 30 seconds before I have to get back to the re grim reality of it. Um, <sighs> so no time to fix any of the problems all of a sudden because there are three days before he leaves. And he insisted he did not want to break up. He, and so he was expecting me to have a solution somehow magically. And I gave a number of solutions that would have a way. You know what this sounds like? This sounds like the girl was like literally hook, line and sinker. Every single thing this dude was saying until the second the relationship was pulled. And then she's like, oh, fuck, I'm a total idiot. And she started rethinking through like every single aspect of it. Because, I mean, the way she's describing this, it's so obvious. This guy's like a total piece of shit. And that might be because she's poisoning the well or she's giving a bad interpretation of the story. Or it might be because, well, now she's realizing in hindsight that she was like extremely stupid throughout a lot of this. And um, and now she's beating herself up for it. And this is like a form of self-flagellation of some kind. Like, I, it could go multiple different ways. That's how I'm reading it, though. It's like self-flagellation. For us to be together, but he refused to make any compromise. He's a shitty boyfriend, no doubt about it, but I don't see him as abusive. Okay, so... The, the hot take here is that like it was like consensual biting and they had like a safe word uh, i don't care what the fuck this girl said you cannot bite your partner in, in an affectionate manner at 27 years old if there's even slight like evidence to suggest that that happens or like if he does that uh i don't really care about anything this girl has said that guy is out of his I'll I'll take the hot take here. I'll go against the commentary community. That guy's weird as fuck if that's happening. You you cannot bite your partner to the point where like you're hurting them or something. You, you can't just walk up and just take a chunk out of your fucking partner's arm and then like like there's a difference between when you do it jokingly or playfully. Like I could totally see a situation where that's happening and saying, "No, I have a quirk since I was a child. I bite people." And not going to get any help for that. Or figure that out or go to like some kind of therapeutic thing and like, that, like this, is, this is like priority numero uno like your parents should have been putting you in something when you were 12 years old to stop you from biting people like this is fucking crazy this is still going on so i don't give a shit dude i don't care what anybody else says the biting shit is weird and i'm not defending that guy um whatsoever and he said 
that the relationship was starting to feel like a responsibility towards the end. Also his words. Um, so it wasn't a responsibility the whole rest of the time to him. And he was at this point basically flaunting that he would never prioritize. Yeah, it's like a Fifty Shades of Grey type thing. But his, but the thing that keeps ringing in my ears is apparently the mom knows about it. Which, again, I'm, I'm doing a little theory crafting here. So don't take this as like a fucking character assassination if I'm wrong. Because again, I'm being very clear. I'm speculating here. But if the mom knows about it, then it's not a sexual thing entirely. Maybe it is now. Maybe it is in this sense. That could very well be the case. But if the mom knows about it, that means he's biting other people. Like maybe siblings or friends or family friends or family and stuff like that. In which case, like it doesn't make any sense why this is going unchecked. Why are these people letting... Why are they letting this happen? Maybe he did it with his mom. Like, I, yeah, but like, I, again, like, I'm, I'm not entirely sold. This is a full sexual thing. I think it's like a fucking an autistic thing or something. Over anything. Um, she didn't know him. Please don't cause problems. Um, and I wasn't even asking for literally even the bare minimum. I was asking for so little. And he, I was watching him give exactly what I was needing in the relationship all over the place to anybody else who, who just happened to ask and just wasn't me. So, um... And he also he and everything I'm saying is obviously under the pretense that there's evidence shown. Now I'm told that there's not much, if any. Um, so again, I'm going entirely off of her statement and his statement. It's all he said, she said. There's no proof to condemn this guy, but there's no reason that I have to defend him either. Never going to prioritize me over anything that would give him more fame or money. In fact, he said that himself. He uh, that was exactly why he was not going to compromise at all for a solution for us to be together because he said he wanted to see how much fame and money he could get. Um, and I just thought we wanted to be together. I thought that's what we both wanted because that's what he was still saying he wanted to. Um, but then he also admitted to me that he had grown resent, uh, he had grown to resent me. And I have to be thankful that he said that bit out loud. A lot of these bits he said out loud because that was the last push that I needed to get myself out. Really? He really? So you weren't out at biting me so hard and smirking afterwards after I told him that it was hurting me. You weren't out at, I don't know if I want to have kids with you. You weren't out at, I don't want to marry you. Your breaking point was, I resent you. And then you were like, oh shit, this guy bites me. All right, whatever had grown resentful which i also pointed out that there was no reason like there was no reason to feel that way and he admitted that there was no reason for him to feel that way either i think that it was because i'm someone who can communicate how i feel um but i don't know i think there i have a lot of theories and reasons why i believe things happen the way that they did and why he was lying all of the time um but he was resentful of me was causing me physical harm every day multiple times a day despite me telling him over and over again to stop he wasn't going to change and he wasn't going to end the relationship. He was going to keep hurting me. And it was possibly going to escalate even further. So I broke up with him. And I didn't even want to. Um, because... Why? Why did you not want to break up with him? Everything is screaming that this is not a good relationship. That's That doesn't make any sense, dude. None of this makes any sense. I don't understand. Like, this makes no sense. I couldn't sense. even see for such a long time after. Um what it really was that had happened, that he had abused me. And in fact- It's because I'm, I'm being given her like post nut clarity version of the story. And I'm asked to believe that like, cause obviously there's some serious bias here, right? That's why this sounds so crazy because I'm getting the post nut clarity version of it after she realized that, hey, this is fucking crazy. And she's saying it in a super uncharitable light, but like, it just seems so weird. Left things as we want to be friends and he can never imagine ne not speaking to me again. Um, and then he never spoke to me again, uh, outside of like a couple of exchanges where I needed to ask for my clothes to be shipped. Um, so at least I got my clothes back. Uh, I had a whole closet full. However, uh, he did throw away all of my other things, uh, without saying a word to me about it. Hundreds of dollars of things from my office were trashed without a word. And I didn't block him till 10 months later because I wanted an open door still. I really thought I wanted to be his friend. He bites you. Um, but, uh, <laughs> I don't feel that way anymore.
I do believe he was bottling up so many emotions uh, and he would never talk about how he felt. Um, I, I think he even, I mean, he did admit that he felt like he couldn't say it any sooner. Like there was just no possible way to say how he was feeling sooner than the absolute last possible chance, like not even a chance because three days before he left, that was actually a lie too. Also, he didn't leave for another week after I left. He, he brought me in, had this three day conversation. He was supposed to leave. And then he stayed for another week before he left uh, with all of the friends that I was also meant to see, but he had lied to me about the dates too. Um, but I do believe that there, uh, that he was bottling up so many emotions that he was taking it out on me. Yeah, why does she sound bitter about a wedding and kids? Because yeah, I mean, he's going to bite your fucking kids physically apparently this is a thing it's social biting aka cute aggression some use biting as yeah that should be whipped out of you and it's up to you to determine whether i'm being metaphorical there's no fu i don't care what syndrome you have you can't bite people in civilized society no i believe there was a moment where he knew that he didn't want to be in the relationship anymore and instead of just ending it he tried to push me away any way he knew would hurt me and he knew all of the ways that would hurt me the most and he knew he was hurting me there was no way that he didn't. Know I do not associate. I'm sorry. There are uh, there are things that I will accept. I'm not accepting social biting. Not you. Ch not you. The chatter. I'm not saying it to you specifically. But fuck right off to anyone who thinks that I'm leg like I'm actually gonna fucking no. no 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 no. Social biting is not a thing. I denounce it. Um, it's not real. Nick Diorio said so. Of the safe word that he made. Uh, and he just didn't care. He was hurting me and he didn't care. And even looked like he was enjoying it sometimes. Uh, <laughs> he loved the taste of flesh. This guy's robbed like a zombie, bro. Um, and I can look back now and I can see all these instances that were really major red flags. Uh, Imagine you go to a party and then everyone there is a social biter. <laughs> they just start like, just, dude, what did this guy do during COVID? They're like, no, oh, you got to put the mask on. Stop biting. Me, stop biting me you will get covid now you will get it you will get covid now um there was this one time that he pinned me down and asked me to try my absolute hardest to get him off of me and i, <laughs> I couldn't do it obviously and he said something to make the point that he was so much stronger than me that i wouldn't be able to fight him back fight back against what what do you mean you don't say shit like that to people that's insane um and i was also sexually assaulted by my first boyfriend and he knew that um he had stopped giving anything to the relationship. And he said that why was because he was just waiting for things to change on their own. Um, he said he also didn't have the time or energy anyway to do the things that I was asking for, uh, but then would constantly make any bit of time and energy for anybody and anything but me. Uh, and he would say he wanted more quality time. So then I would try to arrange things for us to do online because we were uh, long distance, but then he would complain that he doesn't want to spend all of his time on- It's the opening scene of Blade. He's one of the vampires. Yeah, this guy's a fucking Minecraft vampire. They're going to create a new mob called the Wilbur Soot, all right? And it's going to come out and it's going to bite you. ...computer anymore. Uh, and then we'd be there in person and all he wants to do is stay, stay inside, play games on his computer, watch movies. Do you think that, like, he just... Hold on, wait. Dude, this, is, this is how Wilbur fucks, all right? You want to hear how Wilbur fucks? Hey, Wilbur. Wilbur, come on. Come on, Wilbur. Time to give the dicking. <laughs> Wilbur, come on. We're going to have sex now, Wilbur. <laughs> Wilbur, stop biting. I've said the safe word. It's pumpkin. <laughs> Wilbur! Wilbur, stop! Pumpkin! 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 I'm sorry. He doesn't want to go out. Um, and I'm not saying any of this next part to be mean. Um, he lived in filth. Like, I. Oh, dude, I believe that shit. He's the Asmon Gold of Minecraft, I guess. I have never seen. And I've seen filth. This was the worst. Uh, he would spill things on the floor and never, literally never, clean them up. Uh, he got. Imagine if Tipster was a social biter. Kef Kef, I'm sorry. I, the first thing I do is bite. It's like, wait, you've never done that before. I do it for you. <laughs> Ant infestation once um, and wasn't going to do anything about it because he said, he said, bugs are normal in British houses. Um, so I had to buy an ant killer. And Bro, can we get Chud logic on that? Chud, are, is, 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 is ant colonies in your house normal in British homes? Is that normal? Oh God, this girl's American. Did she fly out to the UK to like get in this relationship with this guy that turned into a total dead end? 
who bites people. Oh, maybe that's maybe that's why she was staying and she was putting up with it because she'd already thrown away like so much of her life, left her family to go live in the UK. Is that is that part of it? Maybe I could see that. Chud said it was not normal. Thank you so much. He wouldn't clean his bathroom for a month. Now that would make more sense, kinda. Yeah, listen, that would be a much better response to me. It's like, oh my god, bro. I literally I wanted um I wanted out of this relationship, but the thing is, like, I, I left my family, I moved to the UK, like I I don't know any like none of my friends are here. most people I interact with are on Discord. Like that's all that would make she gets into it, but apparently she would fly there and back to the US. Oh, okay. So she, she's rich. Got it. And months and months, but would constantly complain about how bad it smelled. And I would tell him that's mold. It's mold. He complained about being tired all the time too, which I don't know if that was a lie or not, but mold will do that too. But he would insist that it wasn't somehow without having cleaned in months. It was long distance. Oh, so they weren't actually dating, I guess. <laughs> like, what does that mean? Like they, they, they dated, right? They, they, they lived together, right? So you're saying she'd fly to the UK, he'd bite her and she'd go home? No, they dated, right? They were talking about getting married and having kids, right? They, they, they lived together. No, 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 stop. No, stop, 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 stop saying no. Stop saying no. I'm watching this. They, li they lived together, right? They really dated? It, no, stop. Stop telling me they didn't live together. Fuck you. No. I'm not reviewing a fucking rape of a long distance relationship. No, stop it. Stop saying that. Oh, kill me. Kill They're talking about getting married. What is happening? But it's not mold. 30-year-old, what? No, no, no. Oh, I'm wasting my time. Um, when I met him, he was washing his clothes without detergent. <sighs> um, just wasn't using that at all. And I don't know for how long before I met him. He was just running it with water and then hanging it on his filthy kitchen cabinets. Um, and I felt bad. I felt bad because I felt like he needed someone to help him learn how to be cleaner. I thought he just didn't know how. And I... They didn't live together. Quit with the cope and seethe. Oh, fuck me. This is not This is a cyber rape review. This is literally just like the... Uh, this is an e-sex review. Listened to all of the struggles of his upbringing and I was like he just doesn't know how someone just needs to show him um and then I found out that he said he doesn't clean at all when I'm not there because he just waits for me to get there to do it um and I only found out about that after we broke up because he said it behind my back uh I was doing all of the cleaning and laundry for him also I had a separate bathroom I wanted wait to so you would just fly out there and then do his laundry and leave like who else did laundry I don't get it. Like, so he would just put his clothes in a gigantic ball and you'd show up and be like the laundry police. You'd be like, hey guys. Hey buddy. Yeah. All right. You can bite me. Let's fuck. And then I'll do your laundry. That was like your, that was the terms of your relationship. He would like fly you out to be his maid. I clear. I wasn't using that bathroom. I had a separate bathroom that I cleaned for myself. I had cleaning supplies. I don't think he even actually knew I had cleaning supplies in there. Um, but I had my own bathroom. She was a fly in maid and sex doll that he chewed on. I mean, that's what it really sounds like, right? It doesn't sound like these people like were dating to the point where they would have kids or a relationship or anything. I, I thought this was much more... Uh, I got the vibe that this was much more than it actually was. It doesn't seem like there's much really here. This sounds like um, like an e-girlfriend that like flew out a couple times to fuck. I don't know. Um, all the, all the cleaning, all the laundry, all of it, I was paying for all of the... Um, like paper towels, uh, like soap. All of that only stayed in the house so long as I was buying it. Um, I would arrive and there would just not be toilet paper in the whole house. There were paper towels instead. And who knows for how- Dude, this guy wiped his ass with Taco Bell paper towels that they put in the bag. How long too? Um, I was paying for food. More than half the time. Uh, I'm thinking this guy is like an animal. So he just didn't, he, he wouldn't bathe. He wouldn't be cleanly. He wouldn't have toilet paper and he bites people. Is this guy just a dog? Bro, I get it now. I get why she stayed. Oh my God. 
bro, she's a white woman. And she was dating a dog. Dude. Oh my god. Dude, a white woman found a dog she could ethically fuck. Because he would often push me into ordering food for us even if I had paid for the last meal or the meal before that. Um, and I'm of the opinion now that I shouldn't have been paying for any food. Um, none at all. But I wanted to at least, I thought I was being equal by at least doing like a back and forth. She went to dog wards. Oh no. Oh no. Dude, that's crazy. Um, but... Uh, I ended up paying for food more often than just going back and forth anyway. He would do this to his friends all the time, too. Um, but I was also paying for every plane ticket and the cat sitter, which cost roughly the amount- Wait, I'm sorry. Your boyfriend's like a millionaire. Why are you flying out to fucking fuck him? Like, wait, what? Why are you in this relationship? What are you doing? What are you doing with your life? Wait, wait, wait. No one in your family's telling you, hey, honey, um, your boyfriend's a rich Minecraft YouTuber. Maybe uh, he can come fly out to you every once in a while. He can come to the States. Oh, yeah, 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 he's a YouTube channel. But maybe he could pay for his girlfriend to go bring him toilet paper. You know, maybe give you... I mean, at this point, I'm, I'd be asking for insurance and benefits because it sounds like you were more of a housemate than a life mate, life partner. Of a plane ticket to England. Um, and he never offered to help me pay after the couple of times- She has a 1 million sub YouTube channel. She makes over 500k a year. Okay. Rescinded. Point rescinded. She can fucking pay for her own plane ticket. He did come here to visit me because he paid for the flights that we would both take. Um, but that only happened twice at the very beginning. I have actually had a friend tell me that, that this is financial abuse, but I don't know enough about that to say for myself, but I was telling him that I couldn't afford it uh, all by myself all the time because I was losing money. I was never able to work properly there and he wasn't traveling at all to see me anymore, even though he said he would. Uh, that was like the basis of our entire relationship starting off. Um, so then he agreed to pay for the cat sitter so that it would be basically paying half the cost of my travels. Um, and he did that once. And then never did it again, uh, despite many more months of dating. Uh, and I was traveling often. Um, I had to because he was worried that we weren't spending enough quality time together. And if he was so worried, why didn't he come see you? Oh, wait a minute. Red flag. Then all of the time that he would have ever extra, he would choose choose to not spend it on me because there was an available choice and he chose not to spend it with me often. Um, and I did everything short of Dude, just- Dude, am I fucking retarded? Do, I, do any of you guys think that long distance relationships are real? Long distance relationships in college were just what people told themselves while they were fucking around on their partner. That's, oh yeah, we're in a long distance relationship. Yeah, okay, she was at the frat party. Like, fuck off. Yeah, uh, yeah, she blew a dude in the fucking, in the woods. Really? Yeah, your girlfriend, yeah, I saw her at the party. Like, what are you talking? Like, fuck off. None of these people, like, what is a long distance relationship in the real world? I get it because you guys are like the Discord relationships and shit like that, but like, who the fuck wants a girlfriend who lives halfway across the world? Who wants to be in a relationship with some. I mean, I guess maybe if you're like. If you're gay and you didn't want to tell everyone you're gay or something like that, and you're like in the closet, yeah, my girlfriend lives in Belize. <laughs> Bro. Like, I don't, what is like what is why why do you want to i get it you're dating and it's gonna work out but like i mean it's not gonna work out and your fucking girlfriend's gonna dump you you're gonna dump your girlfriend because you're gonna meet somebody sooner or later or whatever and it's gonna be over like why? why why start a relationship with somebody you met online why do you do this up and move there which i was willing to do the whole time and i told him that i was willing to do it and and he knew uh, but you're he's dating your friends who sexed on Discord. Stop. Stop. Yeah, you have you Zoom fuck. What are you going to do? Get your fucking... You're going to get your the bottom of your desk pregnant? You got to oh give your desk the plan B pill. Like, fuck off. He insisted that I don't. He insisted not to. He was planning to move here. That was supposed to happen first. Um, and then at the end of the relationship, he said maybe things would have been different if I lived there. If I here, dating my boyfriend from high school, we went to college out of town, both of us cheated. Yeah, if you want to add cheating to your repertoire, you should do a long-distance relationship. Dude, I guarantee it. Oh, yeah, I love him so much, he's so cute, or whatever, you go out to the fucking party, you're like, God, I haven't seen him in four months. This, this, this guy just came up to me at the party. I don't know. 
And you're either going to cheat on him or you're going to dump your boyfriend. You're going to just you're going to throw that all away anyway. Why waste the first six months of your college pretending that you're not going to cheat on your boyfriend? Or why waste the first six months of your college pretending you're not going to cheat on your girlfriend? Why not just cut each other off and do the right? Like, I don't make any sense to me. Like, why, why are you prolonging the inevitable just so you guys waste your time? I lived there. Uh, like I had said I would the whole time and he insisted I don't. Maybe that could have saved the relationship. Um, and I say all of this because I believe that people like this are genuinely dangerous. I believe he is dangerous. Um, he was willing to lie. He was willing to do harm to someone he claimed to love more than anyone he has ever loved. Uh, his actions escalated. Um, and I don't- On another stream, someone was saying they're asexual. Okay. So relationships aren't all about, oh, you're in my, like, oh, we can fuck now. We can have sex now. You're in the room with me. Let's fuck. Now that's what long distance relationships are when people meet up because there's a lot of tension and stuff like that. And it's like, oh, we haven't seen in a while. So we just fuck the entire weekend and go away. But the reality is, um, like, I, I still think there are things in a relationship, even asexually, that you're not getting if you don't, like, if, if you're talking to somebody for years without ever meeting them. Like, aren't you afraid you're gonna get catfished or something? Or, I, I don't know. It's there's so many life activities that you'd want your significant other there for that you just can't. You know, like you can't go on double dates with your friends. You can't like, like what are you gonna do? You're gonna bring the iPad. You're gonna go out to the bar with your friend and his girlfriend, and you're gonna bring your iPad, and your girlfriend's gonna remote into the call, like a like a work meeting. You're gonna go to both. You're gonna go to your prom. You're gonna fly out to California to like, like, like. I, you're gonna go to the homecoming dance or whatever. Like, what, what's the one in college? They have, they have a a fucking. Uh, what's the the college version of homecoming or whatever? They had like a, um, like a, a, a dance that wasn't like an end of the year thing that everyone went to. They all drank and whatever. Uh, formal. Oh well, yeah. Well, formal was we had those for the fraternity, but uh, it was it for, was it called formal? I forgot what it was. But like, yeah, I mean, it made any sense to me, dude. It makes no sense to me. I think that I'll be the last person that he hurts. Uh, and I felt like sharing my story was really- Like, dude, 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 dude. <laughs> like, I mean, what about, like, bringing your girlfriend to your family or something like that? Like, what, going to the holidays and stuff like that. Or, like, there's just so much- I, And then, don't get me started with this. Like, oh, God, I, I probably shouldn't- I gotta watch what I say here because I don't want to piss off people I know in real life. But, like, another thing that, like, really freaks me out- is when people are getting married and they've never lived together before. That's another one. And I guess, like, for some people, that's not possible, uh, especially in, like, certain financial situations and shit like that. Where they, But, like, could you imagine tying the knot, but you don't know if you, like, you're compatible to live together? Uh, and that's a reality for a lot of people in New York and stuff like that because housing prices are crazy. Um, but for me, I just, it irks me. It scares me, like, that concept or whatever. Like, you have to know if you're compatible. You have to know if you can wake up next to this person or if this person's clean. Or Again, this person's talking about marriage and stuff like that and saying her boyfriend doesn't buy toilet paper. Do you think he's suddenly just going to, like, like you can you can change him into being someone who wipes their ass? Um, like this person seems to have a lot of problems that you're overlooking because you want to keep dating them. Uh, but that's just me. To warn people. Um, I want people to see the signs that I refused to. I want you to listen to your body. Um, and get out as soon as possible. Like, tell your friends like, the truth. I don't want to say this, but it's kind of delusional. Diesel has photos of the bite marks and showed them on stream. I, uh, if you can get me some of that, uh, like, can you get me some of them bite marks? Let me see those. Um, yeah. And let them help you. <laughs> um, I really thought I, I couldn't, because I had been sexually assaulted in a previous relationship, I just thought I was so much smarter to never and i was like if someone ever laid their hands on me i'd leave immediately it would never happen a second time but you you just it just kind of happened so slowly over time and got worse and worse and worse until the point where there's no way to deny the fact that he was hurting me and he knew and and didn't care that's just the kind of thing that i keep repeating to myself when i'm like but was it bad enough what it wasn't violent enough um but oh, i was man. being hurt multiple times every single day days and days and days and days for a month at a time in a row uh, and I'm not even speaking on most because I did touch on other things, but I'm not even speaking on most of the other things that, in my opinion, I do think that there are some things that are across a line that make you a bad person. I don't think that most people can be defined in a black and white, you're good or you're bad, but I do believe that there is a line that you can cross and only bad people will do the things on the other side of that line. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. And number of... I only cry now when I'm talking about my friends who also dealt with such shitty things from shitty people. 
Um, but I'm also so, so grateful for all of my friends who were through uh, with me through this whole thing and my friends who also were experiencing similar similar sorts of situations um, at the same time. And we kind of went through it together. So um, I think they are the strongest people in the whole world. And they made me feel like the strongest people in the whole world today. Did I call myself people? I'm in person. I feel like the strongest people. <laughs> I said it again. I feel like the strongest person. They made me feel so brave. I felt impenetrable today. Um, but I am going to go now because my friends are coming over and <laughs> we're immediately going to go become distracted by watching Love is Blind. I already watched all of it already and I don't care. So thank you um, for listening. Thank you everyone who gets the subs. Um, <sighs> I don't know. That last part was kind of sad. I don't really have a funny joke for that. I don't know. Let's take a look at the response now. Oh, that's not the response. That's Mike Tyson. Uh, this is the response. I have withheld reading this uh, until this point of the stream because I wanted to watch that without getting super poisoned um, because I don't really think it's possible to backtrack something like this. So again, you're getting my raw reaction. I don't care if it's the wrong one. This is my genuine and raw take. Um, in the past week, a series of allegations have... Uh, I'm, I'm not going to do the music bit. It's getting late. I'm tired. <laughs> I don't want to do the whole fucking... I'm not going to act this time. I'm not going to do my acting role of being rape number five or something. Uh, here. Let's see. In the past week of serious... Alle uh, serious allegations... I can't speak. In the past week, a series of allegations have been made over my conduct from an ex-girlfriend. I wanted to emphasize that although I feel it fair to offer my perspective... This person's feelings are completely valid, and I've taken time sharing this statement as I wanted to process and respond respectfully with the hopes to gain a deeper understanding for the situation. Oh, fuck. So that's the one paragraph I've seen everyone talk about. I think I spoke about this on some stream. Um, you're making a big mistake. A big mistake. You're making it impossible to defend you with that sentence. I get it. A lot of people are getting triggered and they're saying like, you can't dismiss him off of this statement. Uh, he was just being woke. He was just being woke when he said that her feelings are valid. Okay. Um, you can tell that to everybody else uh, and, and wait and see what they think about it. But um, you've shot yourself in the foot severely by opening up saying that her feelings are valid. That is, um, that is a really bad fucking play. That is a really really bad for uh freudian clip right there I i'm sorry um so again i'm seeing spoilers in the chat i haven't gotten that far uh during our relationship's final months i regrettably became slobbish disrespect so he's saying that he wasn't always a slob that he actually previously owned toilet paper so he's denying the toilet paper allegations um these caused a lot of pain to my ex-girlfriend and i've since sought therapy there it is guys chat chat there's the therapy chat therapy bazinga 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 therapy therapy he said the thing who um to address these behaviors making significant lifestyle by the way uh pedophiles are using the term therapy to try and uh alert others that i'm kidding i'm kidding i'm kidding i'm kidding i'm kidding um so I'm addressing these behaviors, making significant lifestyle changes to rectify past actions. I've come to realize how much my past behaviors are hurting this person, but I truly compassionately believe I have made great strides. Uh, the person I once was, hopefully... Okay, so this is all word salad. This doesn't mean anything. So his response on, on page one is, I'm going to be better, but I'm not going to tell you what I did or why I'm not good now, but I'm going to be better. Uh, and everything my ex-girlfriend said is a valid emotional belief and uh, i support her ability to be a woman nice okay so that got me a lot of context this one hopefully will provide more the allegation of abuse okay this is his first this is his second mistake the first mistake was saying that his girlfriend's feeling or ex-girlfriend's feelings were valid the second mistake was waiting until the second screenshot to deny the abuse part um because there are enough people in the world who are not going to make it to screenshot number two and they're going to read um, a series of allegations have made. And I want to emphasize that it's fair to offer my perspective. This person's feelings are completely valid. And they're never going to see this screenshot that says, by the way, I didn't abuse you. Um, yeah. Uh, so why is saying her feelings are valid a mistake? Uh, because she's accusing you of, of abuse. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you don't want to say that's valid maybe am i speaking like a different language here no 
if, if she's lying, you say she's lying. Uh, if you're denying, because he's he's clearly denying the abuse, right? So then her feelings wouldn't be valid. It's an oxymoron. <laughs> like what? what uh, yeah, uh, no, you can't. No, you can't say that. Um, he's denying the abuse. He's like your feelings are valid. Well, she can feel like. You no <laughs> no no she's that no that's insane. Um, throughout our relationship, I understood from our numerous conversations and oh sorry, particular uh, the allegations of abuse, particularly in the form of biting, are deeply shocking to me. So like you you understand where she's coming from, but you're shocked she would say it. Like it, this, this this doesn't track. It feels like the the um. Like the uh, the PR team wrote message one, and he's like, "Hold on, I gotta add a few things." So the PR team was like, "Yeah, your emotional state is totally justified. I totally get why you feel the way that you do." But I'm like, super fucking shocked that you're surprised that I don't like that I was biting you. Like it's, it doesn't track. Um, but uh, throughout our relationship, I understood from numerous conversations and text messages and exchanges on the subject that this behavior was consensual, playful, and reciprocally enjoyed. I believe those personal message exchanges ref uh, reflect mutual uh, affection and understanding. Out of my perspective, wait, I'm sorry. Out of respect for her, I choose not to publish them, and I emphasize my per uh, perspective is not shared to diminish or invalidate anyone's feelings. Yeah, like this is the worst response I've ever read to anything. So he says that her like her feelings are justified um except the part with the biting which is the main allegation against him is that like he aggressively bit her um and he doesn't say anything along the lines of like yeah I I consent like he's con confirming that he bites his girlfriend which he's like fucking weird as fuck for uh and I I refuse to to stand I and, and I I refuse to engage with this um, in any other way than you're weird for biting people. Uh, I need more information on the biting. I need to know who you bite. I need to know if you're biting dudes. I need to know how long you've been biting. I need to know if you bite people when you've been previously employed. Like, have you worked? Did you try biting people at, at Walmart or something when you're like when you were working like a fuck? Every every one of these people have worked like um some sort of retail job. Did you like bite people over the counter at McDonald's? Like, how does what is the mechanics of your biting? That's what I need to know. That's what that's like this like this need. Apparently, he bit James Marriott. Yeah, but I mean. Maybe they're bi. I, I don't like. I I need to know what the biting is. Yeah, Wilbur is literally a dog name. That's another one. Um, yeah, I, I agree with that. Uh, and now it's like, so I your feelings are valid, okay? Um, and I deny the biting. Like I completely deny the biting. Um, and I respect her enough that I'm not gonna expose her. Instead, I'm sharing this in the hopes that I can offer a genuine, fair, relevant insight into my understanding of the situation, but I'm not going to provide you any of that. I'm just going to be super vague. Uh, while I might perceive our interactions differently, I recognize this person has processed and expressed feelings of hurt, and I want to extend my serious apology. So now I'm saying I'm sorry, and I disagree with your, your opinion of me. Um, okay. I'm fully committed to understanding and addressing her concerns going forward. My perspective shed. I hope my perspective sheds light on this situation without distracting from its message. Wait, where did he copy and paste that from? Did anyone point this out? Why does the font change? Look, that's on. That's without. Why does the font change? You say AI, but the AI wouldn't change font. It's a simple copy and paste. You don't see it? Here. Um, look at the spacing on this line right here. Like, without, and look at forward like just compare these two the font is different the spacing completely changes and it's just this situation without distracting from its message is the copy paste so he forgot to hit like copy like that's weird did anybody notice that yet that like he copy pasted that in the middle of it 
Oh, I can't see your mouse. I'm so sorry. Um, so yeah, the word forward has this spacing and then without, it's this whole thing right here. This whole part was copy pasted in and he forgot to match format and it's not anywhere else. Like I don't see it anywhere else like this. That's really weird. I, I don't know what to make of that. Um, it's the PR team. No, the PR team wouldn't write something as stupid. He might blame it on a PR team, but this makes no sense. I don't know who he hired. Bro, who did you hire? Dog fucked you up. Um, I'm fully committed to... Un oh, really, yeah, sorry. I got caught at, the, uh, at this weird part. I am dedicated to earning and maintaining the trust of those around me. And, you know, it's nice. All right. Um, so this guy provided us fucking nothing, like literally nothing. Like this is the one. This is James Charles one response. Um, only I feel like he's conceded more ground than he should have. Uh, even if he's lying, I think he's conceded too much ground. Um, here's the deal, and I'm gonna be blunt and I'm gonna be honest with you because I see a lot of my peers and other content creators in the space being super aggressive one way or the other. Um, I agree. At this point of the drama, watching that video in this response, there is no substantial evidence to provide for her story. I also think that there's a certain trend in this community that immediately takes that and goes, okay, that's a lying bitch trying to ruin a man's career. And there are a lot of times where that's true. Like, that's real. That's happening. Um... In this case, being 100% honest with you, I would not be caught dead sticking my neck out for this guy. Never. Um, I would rather fence it the fuck out of this drama and wait for more information to come forward without giving any definitive statements or pushing super hard one way or the other. Because this guy has given me nothing to work with. Everything he's saying sounds bad. Um, so I am not going to go out of my way and start demanding information here because as far as I'm concerned, this is not a statement. This is less than a statement. Uh, this guy needs to cam up and tell us what happened or I'm not engaging with it further. So, yeah, all of his friends sided with Shelby. I'm talking about people I know. Um... I'm not sticking at my neck out for somebody immediately who I don't know who's not even adequately defending himself. I'm not getting in the way. Not a chance. You know what this feels like? This feels like when Destiny jumped out to defend like Invader V or Pokimane, right? And even though he believed his position was right, at the end of the day, Pokimane was going to apologize and he was going to, like, she was going to make everyone defending her look bad. In those situations and stuff like that uh so it's not really worth jumping in and saying anything uh because i mean at the end of the day uh you're just going to take the l anyway because the person's going to apologize and concede anyway uh this isn't exactly the same because I, I don't know if i'm right or wrong here i i can't possibly know that i know that this guy's been accused of biting women which is weird as fuck um, and I need to know more information about that before I make any legitimate judgment calls about the story. Okay, because if he's biting people unchecked and he's not getting, seeking any help for that, and it's just a quirk of his fucking, like, ooh, tee hee, I bite people, hee hee. Uh, I bite my friends, I bite my parents, I bite my dog, I bite my sister, or whatever, and, and, and Wilbur's a fucking biter, okay? Uh, fuck that, because <laughs> I'm not defending that guy at all. I don't care. Uh, that's weird as fuck. Um... Uh, if he is trying to fix the biting at 27 years old, uh, I guess that's like a, okay, good in the right direction, but, um, <laughs> I'm not dismissing this girl's claims. There's nothing to dismiss. Uh, he claimed, she claimed something happened and he kind of came out and said, yeah, I, I don't blame her thinking that, but it's not true. And I'm not going to tell you why, uh, and you're going to defend me for it. <laughs> so I'm not going to do that either. I'm just going to say, uh, I don't know <laughs> and there's there's not enough information here to make any legitimate judgment calls about the story at all uh, I can't call him an abuser uh, I, I can't say that she's a liar 
but I, I also, I don't know why he bites people or if, what the, what the nature of the biting is. And I feel like that needed to be like priority numero uno to explain. I don't, I can't, how do you release a story without going, Oh yeah, I'm a serial biter. Like, how do you not give context to that? Um, at least he conceded he was a slob, but he didn't stardust. He said he kind of like became a slob towards the end of their relationship. So yeah, he's saying I'm a slob now, but he's still denying the claim. This is a guy who wanted to come out and said the bitch fucking lied. And then somebody told him, hey man, that's not how we handle that in the Minecraft community. You have to justify her feelings. And that's the most charitable response I can give. If he's not totally guilty, that's what happened. Hey man, listen, I'm on your side, but you have to suck her dick a little bit in your response video. That's what happened. If, 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 if he's right and this is a defendable case, well, his friend just ruined it because it's no longer defendable. I don't care what happens. Um, the, he well, like It's defendable from a sense that you could always get to the truth, right? But there's a percentage of people who read that response who will never side with him after this. It has damaged his credibility beyond belief. Um, and that's his own fault. He published that statement. I can't say anything about it. Uh, that's not his fault there. Um, Smag is pinging my DMs. Who the fuck? You refer to Smaggle as Smag. What do we got here? So this is like smoking gun here, I guess. Um, this isn't easy for me to celebrate right now. Uh, but I'm so proud of my community. I made my channel 17 years ago this month and the milestone seemed out of reach. Thank you for the bottom of my heart. This community means the world to me. So I guess I'm supposed to be outraged here that she tweeted out that she hit a million during the drama as if that's not like a huge fucking milestone. What was her growth like before this? Like, I, I don't know. It feels like a reach to me. Uh, by the way, if I'm being too charitable here, can I just stop and say that Shovel is like the most retarded fucking name I've ever heard? I thought it was a joke when I heard it. Like, what, what the fuck is Shovel? That is the stupidest name. Um, shovel? Social Blade. Yeah, oh, whoa. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, all right. She gained 40,000 subs. I mean, she had... She was losing subs before this. Okay, all right. I guess there's a critique there. Yeah, she's been losing subs. Um... Total subscribers for Shovel. She was at 969. She hits 969 in 2023. That's ah, 2023 though. So she, eh, um, and then she bleeds down to her lowest of. So she lost about 10,000 subs, and then she jumped up to a million. Okay. All right. I guess maybe it's criticizable, but again, if I hit a million subs, I I can totally see this happening naturally, and that just being a tone deaf tweet too. So I'm not gonna just fucking say it's bullshit. It doesn't help that she has pink hair. Shovel is also a dog's name, like Wilbur. I, dude, this is fucking. This is this. There's so much weird shit here. Um, I don't know. Maybe I, I. I don't. I don't know if I care about that right now. I need to see a lot more shit before I start digging down and getting that uncharitable. Um, let me see. Oh, does anyone have the screenshots of the biting? I heard there's evidence of the biting that Diesel had. I don't I don't know. Do you have a timestamp to Diesel's stream so I can see some of these gashes? Um Smaggle, get me the gash screenshot. Uh people put it in your dms uh, i can tell you they didn't because i don't have them unless star gave it. no star didn't give it to i do not have the bites smaggle dm me asking if paul walker was a pedophile huh <sighs> Gash review. FYI, the inconsistency of the letter spacing is because text alignment is sent to justified, making each line of the text of the paragraph the same width. Oh. Okay. All right. I could believe okay, that makes sense. I didn't get that. All right. Okay. Um. 
Smaggle's a crayon eater. Yeah, dude, Smaggle's not coming up for us right now. He doesn't he doesn't care about rape review. He's not a he's not a big time raper. Um, which is kind of fucked, I guess. I don't know. Uh while I'm waiting for someone to send this to me, because there's no way I'm gonna find it in time. Um let's catch up on donos. Thank you guys so much for your generosity. You've been super generous tonight. Um uh, feeding my pinball addiction. <laughs> Cats of Flock and Ten gifted. Lavender Wise, two dollars, raw doggin. Uh, the game in which membership thoughts on ice spike uh, spice coke it's kind of mid not gonna lie I haven't tried it Frenchies Fry $2 classic Nick D'Aurelio Pop Rocks Oreos brother uh, game in which with Fiverr I spe uh, spread a little misinformation on the coke thing it's spiced coke I thought it was ice spice it's actually like a cherry gra uh, grape flavor got it Teddy $10 Stanley Cups Beats by Dre what the fuck when I was in high school we just had rape Jesus Teddy um, Mad Max $2 she's quirky oh my god uh mad max two dollars give me kith baby oh kith is the uh they made an arcade one-up collab uh the game in which two dollars tank two was reincarnated as wilbur captain poofers five dollars soot is ta uh, taking hickey to new levels gamer girl and co thank you for the membership hey nick really glad i can catch the stream it's time filthy robbie with two dollars he's got that dog in him equals autism uh mad max two dollars she needs some more seasoning Autistic Twink BBC Rapist sent $2. Thoughts on the comments DMAX made about Magnetar? Uh, I don't really have any. I just thought it was really retarded. But I think the whole slew of those people are kind of retarded, so I don't really know. Toastify, $2. It, that was, like, excessively stupid. Uh, Magnetar is given no inclination that he's, like, a scammer in any such way. People will call him out if that's the case, but it just seemed like they were throwing a tantrum that some guy who got smeared as a pedophile wanted to... Well, oh, sorry. Some guy that... Um, had pedophile allegations levied against him without justification or without like visible evidence was upset about it, which like as if that's some sort of crazy thing to do. Um, so yeah, if he runs with the money, I'll be the first to criticize him, but there's no inclination that I've been given so far that he'll do that. Um, yeah. I don't just assume that everyone who makes a GoFundMe is a scammer. Maybe that's of my own stupid bias. Toastify too. So will Wilbur suit be destroyed like De Deji's dog? Uh, I mean, it sounds like he's been destroyed. You go on to, Here's another aspect to this drama that I'll start talking about immediately after. The level of fucking delusion that is Twitter is one of those where it almost makes me... There are times when I, I'm not, I don't feel too passionate about a subject, but then I read what people on Twitter are saying, and they make me angry, and I cover the story more aggressively. It definitely happens. It's definitely something that shouldn't happen. It's definitely something I'm trying to make not show through as much, but I get like radicalized by retards on Twitter, and boy, are there a lot of them for these Wilbur allegations, man. There are a lot of dumb fucking people talking about this story that make this unbearable. They're pulling up old clips with no correlation, claiming he's been an abuser for years. They're claiming that he's like a fucking rapist pedophile or something on Twitter because he hung out with Tommy in it when he was a minor. I don't avow any of those people. I think they're all delusional retards. And I think a lot of the people who are defending uh, the shovel person kind of fall into that camp on social media. But you got to kind of take the good with the bad here. It's the Zoomer Minecraft audience. That's how they police their fucking community. Do I agree with it? No. But like anybody who gets accused in that space, that's the risk you run of hanging out in the fucking woke fucking... I don't like using the word woke because it's, it's usually just a gay uh, fucking random uh, throw in term for shit you don't like or whatever. But anyone who hangs out with the TikTok Zoomer crowd or whatever of goody two shoes dumb fucks um, is now going to subscribe to their camp of whatever the fuck they deem is whatever. And it's like you you live by the sword, you die by the sword. If you want an audience of TikTok Zoomers, you want to pretend you're a humble fucking person. Uh, the minute they find out you're not, they're going to crucify you and take all your money and your income and everything you've earned in your entire career. And there's nothing I can say to help you with that. Your audience you cultivated thinks that rape is when you kiss a person unprovoked. Okay. And, uh, and, and then, I'm sorry, when you try to kiss a person, you back off unprovoked. They think that's what rape is. So, um, I can't really help you on that. You, you drank from the golden chalice and then you ran out. Um, so, yeah, using the term woke unironically is pretty gay. Yeah, I agree. Um, so there's not really much I can do to help you there. <laughs> no Turkey Tom video is going to be able to help Wilbur Soot. Um, they're just going to turn around and say Tom's a Nazi racist and his word is invalid. <laughs> like 100%. 
Um, oh, I thought I was showing gameplay that whole time. Uh, notice the lack of proof to the biting BTW. Yeah, two dollars. Um, one up. Thank you for the two. Mad Max, two dollars. I'm a chair thrower. Date me. Doomer Media, two dollars. Minecraft eating sound. Wav. Uh, Nepta Katvaria, two four twenty to Canadian Wilbur Gerard Davis. Um, Norman Ormy with a tenner. Uh, here's an obli obligatory payday dono before I get to the thick of the stream. <laughs> Thank you. Lady J, six ninety nine Canadian. He was already biting. She yelled the safe word. Apparently, he grinded his teeth. I think he probably just flinched. Uh, Stone Vase from Home Depot, $10. Hey, Nicholas. This victim is saying she broke up, but is also upset he didn't propose and felt used. She wanted marriage and said all this on a monetized stream. Now, I'm not saying... I, I don't know if that's a fact yet. I, I'm not ready to say that just yet. It's a little early. Uh, Yaskuzi, $2. He's not being the ant allegations. Call Me Brought, $2. You think Camden Gerard Davis is a serial biter? Probably. You know, that's what those vampires do. Brantroid, $5. She wouldn't be able to be a victim if she broke up with him. That's why she stayed. Mute Map Maker, $2. She didn't leave because she likes red flags. Uh, Boy Fieri, member. Uh, she didn't leave because she's the white woman who finally got to fuck her dog. Um, Shady RK9, $5. People currently doxing and sending Wilbur Swift death threats. Things are getting serious. Yeah, I, I disavow all of that, obviously. I think all those people are mentally ill and retarded, but there's nothing I can do to help them. Uh, Biker, $2. Where can I find the names of the songs you use? Uh, I use the Max Payne 1 and 2 theme song. Uh, I also use the Resurrection song by Lena Rain, and I used uh, the theme song to... I think that was Goldeneye? I think that's what I played tonight. Uh, and the Minecraft zombie sound when he's gnawing off. <laughs> pumpkin, pumpkin. Um, uh, I play your old streams to fall asleep. Love you, Nick. Thank you, Catnip. Two dollars. I appreciate it. Buzzsaw, three dollars. Uh, Shady RK9, five dollars. Why are is people calling a pedo for hanging out with Tommy? He was a minor. They all hung out with him. Yeah, it's because they're retarded. Because they're retarded adults and retarded children. Uh, all of that stuff just makes the situation a lot harder because it makes people radically pissed off at reading all this retarded shit. So Shovel put out another statement and I've also been handed and we're winding down now. This is the very end here, I would say. I don't think there's much. Um, Diesel sent me the bite mark screenshots. So these are the bites. Uh, bite marks, Bruce, she talked about picture posted on the 10th of August. Um, so I guess these were posted and she didn't realize, I mean, you're, Um, I'm fucking, hold on, we have to enhance. Is this it? Is this the bite mark? Is it this? Okay. I'm fucking retarded, right? I don't see a shit on this. I'm looking at like my th Is that the bite mark? It's on her arm? It's a zoom and enhance of one photo. Three times. You sure she didn't just get a scratch? There's filters too? I don't... Let me put my glasses on real quick. Let me see where. Hi, so you don't have to apologize to me. I just want to explain this a lot nicer than you other people. Wilbur bit Shelby is a love and playful way and got consent at the beginning. She, okay, how could you know any of this shit? That's just what he said. And that's what she said. How could you know anything about this? These people are literally just like saying, yeah, he bit me hard and it wasn't consensual. And he's like, yeah, but it was consensual. How the fuck can I engage with that? Nobody's giving me anything to work with here. It's just, how can I possibly, like, oh, okay, whatever. Yeah, you bit me super hard. Oh, no, I didn't. Okay, well, I guess the bitch lied. Or I guess, oh, he must be a fucking rapist. Crazy. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know how, I, I don't get it. I don't know how half of Twitter can do that. I don't, I don't know, it makes no sense to me. Bring back shame. Yeah, maybe just don't date people who bite you. That's my big takeaway. That's my big nuclear takeaway. Just stop dating biters. Um, that's probably the best way to go about it. Maybe just don't date autistic people who bite people. Look, I'm, call me crazy, but Poblax has never tried to bite me at VidCon before. I don't know. Maybe he's got a different type, you know? Um, maybe, I don't know. 
doesn't really make much sense to me. So we got shovel, 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 shovel. Worst name in the game. Okay, here we go. Whew. Fortnite down. Uh, I thought a lot about what I would say when I came back. Firstly, I want to say the biggest thank you to everyone showing their support. Okay. Um, I've never felt so loved and cared for. I've never seen so many communities come together and have so many back like this. Well, I didn't do this to myself. I did this sharing the story. Okay, but you do this for yourself. Wait, is she saying she didn't do this for herself? She said that like being quiet is hurting her. I thought she literally said she was doing it for herself. I like to address the apology. Quite frankly, I've never seen an apology so self-centered. It seems because be, he's trying to defend himself. Wasn't really an apology. He didn't really apologize for anything. He just said that your feelings are justified, but he just, he disagrees, um, and said he won't hurt you. I, I don't. That wasn't really anything. I don't know what that sentence was. Um, it seems purposely to misconstrue the idea that it very clearly laid out. My issue was not being bit. It was being hurt. And to vaguely apologize for any hurt while knowing that we needed a safe word because I was being hurt so often by the accident and continue to hurt. Yeah, I, I, that is a concession that he was by. I mean, I find it kind of crazy that he didn't just like talk. About, I, I, I've been saying this. I've repeated myself a hundred times. I, I, I don't understand why. Wh wh why is he not explaining the biting thing better? <laughs> it made any sense to me. Um, but I'm more disrespectful and not even saying my name. I believe I'm referred to as ex-girlfriend. I don't think that matters. Um, not only are there no DMs whatsoever, it's not, it's expressed that I enjoy being hurt by my partner who implied there was consent and text over an issue that happened entirely in person where every conversation happened about it in person. It's ridiculous. He knows how often I asked him to stop hurting me and that I didn't like it. Wait, wait, hold on. Not only are there, are there no DMs what's whatsoever where it's expressed that i enjoy being hurt by my partner okay i believe that doesn't exist to imply there was consent in text over an issue that happened in person with every hmm. so you want so i have to suspend a little disbelief here you're telling me that in all the conversations where you talked about being hurt in your long distance relationship you don't have a clearly outlined message that you can point to where you were telling him, you need to stop biting me. You only ever, because you always hear like, I didn't want to confront him in person, but I was better doing it private. You didn't want to confront your boyfriend that he was hurting you when he was seeing you, when you got home, when it was easier to have that conversation. You only wanted to do it in person when he was in front of you. You, you said that you expressed this a lot, but you couldn't, but you didn't do it in text. That's a little weird. Um, I'm reading chat because maybe that's been addressed, but it doesn't. It seems like that's no. Most people seem to go all right. Um, every conversation about it happened in person. I, that's a little weird. Uh, is ridiculous. I I I, I got to suspend a lot of disbelief to think that she's not addressing how he's hurting her privately, and that lends credence to why he felt blindsided by that comment. But maybe not. Maybe maybe I'm being stupid about this. She seemed to have a post nut rationalization that he was hurting her on purpose after the fact, right? So maybe I don't, maybe I don't know. I don't know. I'll think about it more probably after tonight because we're gonna have to do a follow up for this eventually. Um, he knows how often I asked him to stop hurting me that I didn't like it and that I didn't like being covered in bruises all the time. Entirely why he switched to biting my legs so no one would think I looked abused. Ooh, that wasn't a red flag for you? Wait, so he has a nerd, like he has an autistic tick where he bites you, right? But he could pick where he bites you? So, like, he has to bite because he can't stop biting. But he can control himself and only bite your legs? I need to understand the bite mechanics. I don't know how the biting works, and every time I read about it, it makes more like, less sense to me. And then people are telling me, oh, no, it's real. People bite, and I don't believe them. And I think it's retarded. And I think you're retarded for saying... I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I think that you're misled for saying it to me. And then I read shit like this, where it's like he 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 had the, the wherewithal to know that I have to bite her legs because they're going to think I'm abusing her. Like, what would the red flag have been for you? When would you have realized, hey, this is probably not something that he's doing on by accident? You, you waited till after the relationship to realize that? Like, what, what was he saying? Hey, honey, you got to wear long sleeves so I can really chomp down on your wrists. 
I'm going to go vertical when I bite your wrists. Like, and you're like, oh, tee hee, maybe that's a little weird. Maybe you shouldn't do that. Wilbur. Woof. Like, that makes no sense to me, dude. I need to understand the mechanics, how this fucking, how this feature works. Does anyone have the patch notes that explains the biting? Yeah, it's made by Todd Howard. He just glitched out. They had to, they, somebody had to fucking come in and patch it, which was a dream, I guess. Um, he continued to hurt me. He either didn't take my pleas for it to stop seriously, or he didn't hear them at all. Is there a part two to this? Yes, there is. I felt lost for so long, truly losing myself in this relationship. I abandoned my personal morals. I neglect. You know what this sounds like? She sounds like JF's girlfriend. Oh, no, I, I found JF. I, I left my family. I lost my job. My friends abandoned me. And I just wanted to suck JF's dick. I felt so lost for so long. I truly lost myself in the relationship. I abandoned my personal morals. I neglected my friends. I lied for this person. Like, it's, that's what it sounds like. That's what I'm... I, it's just... I, 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 uh, okay. Uh, every time I spoke up, I was being ignored. I shrank. I lost my will to fight. I, locked, I stayed locked in the house. I had no key in. I didn't try to leave anymore. People ask why we stay. It's so hard to explain to ourselves because we abandon all of our reason. Like, you're in a Discord relationship, girl. I wasn't safe anymore with this person, but I couldn't see that. Like, did you hang up? Like, why did you fly to go see him? Like, you didn't realize, like, hey, I'm not really safe with this person. Better fly to, like, better fly to the UK. It's a long-distance relationship essay that makes no sense to me. Um, like, yeah, I mean, I could believe that if you live together, it's more believable with the last girl we talked about. I guess maybe if it's the last interaction, but she's not saying that she left because she thought he was abusive and felt unsafe to be there. She's saying she left because like they had issues with like kids and marriage and that she broke up with him for that. So it doesn't really add up if she thought she was in immediate danger. Um, I'm deeply saddened by how many more friends were hurt by his actions. I'm so thankful to everyone doing the absolute most. Make sure they're going to get shovel squad. I hate hashtags like that. Um, okay. There's nothing else here. Wait, there's another paragraph. Um, you can't treat people this way without consequence. You can't pretend you don't know how many, whatever. Oh, this is actually kind of based you can't pretend going to therapy fixes all your past mistakes. That is, un unironically, I'm back on the shovel train. That is actually pretty fucking based. I've been saying this for weeks, dude. I'm so sick and tired of every influencer who fucks up being like, you know, I got caught doing this, but I'm going to therapy now and my life's going to be so much better. Someone like got mad at me on Twitter because I started shitting on therapy. And it's like, I'm not shitting on the concept of therapy. I think therapy works for a lot of people. I think you guys, influencers, use it as a fucking crutch and a get out of jail free card because no one in their right mind is going to question you on. No one's going to be like, what did you learn in therapy? You know, that's a personal thing. I shouldn't say anything about it no because you just say that at the beginning of your fucking response video when you're like hey guys i'm gonna be better i'm gonna do better i'm gonna do better you never do better you just say that you're going to therapy so people are like oh okay well hold on tommy he's going to therapy stop shot from the point we don't know if he's really trying to better himself or he just threw in i'm going to therapy as a fucking end the drama now card yeah i, I roll my eyes when i read that and it's a bit longer you know when you can talk about therapy? When you've changed your life and you want to accredit how you changed your life. Saying I'm going to therapy doesn't mean anything. Going to therapy, changing your life, coming back and going, well, what? how did you fix this? Like, you used to be a total loser before. You used to be, like, an alcoholic. Uh, you used to, like, really, like, oddly defend Lollicon for your friends. Um, you used to, like, make really cringe gay tweets and stuff on social media. You used to, like, you know, kind of, like, pseudo-cheat on your wife and flirt with a bunch of girls in DMs and act really weird when people called you out on it uh, and say that they don't understand what flirting is. Like, um, uh, you used to be, like... Uh, really backstabby and stuff like that. You, you couldn't leave your friend group or whatever without stabbing them in the back on the, as you left. Uh, you changed all your morals to be friends with some, like probably like the Hitler of, her, of your leftist community. Um, but then you're like, but like, how did you turn all that around and become kind of normal? Oh, well, um, I went to therapy about it. I didn't make myself a victim and I now I'm better. Oh, okay, cool. You know, like, nice. 
good one, dude. Therapy. But it's always like, you know, I, um, I've been trying to stop drinking for a while. I'm go I started therapy yesterday. I'm, I'm making real strides. All right, let's do a drinking stream on Friday. That's, that's always what we're dealing with here. Um, <laughs> Yeah, mental illness is an explanation, not an excuse. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, maybe if the trial, I don't care about any of this stuff. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, these are all like big YouTubers too, like Rambo. That's a big YouTuber, right? Rambo. The strength you've shown is incredible. Like they're getting in the get out of jail free. Uh, you're truly a blessing to this world, Minx. Um. But you like look up Wilbur Soot and it's just like slop of retardation and autism. I could do a whole second episode talking about it. I'll probably lead with that in the part two to the stream. Um, yeah, tipster's therapist is Dr. Jack Daniels. That's fucking brutal vitriolic. Jesus, that's a really good one. Um, Rambo is a series of action movies. Yeah, even the name sounds retarded. Yeah. Oh, man. That's crazy. Um, Norma Normy. Hey, chat. I just wanted to share that I have hot wings on the way to the house. That's pretty based. I'm happy for you. I'm a big wing fan. Um, what are the songs you used in the Mama Max video? Oh, that's a lot of songs. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know how to start and try to figure that out. Okay. Let's pretend. Um, let's go off this. I don't need this anymore. Okay. So we have to figure this one out, chat. So these guys were long distance. All right. So he's claiming he's got evidence of her being down with the fucking biting. Um, I guess. And she's claiming that she has no evidence of telling him that she's been hurt. Because all the conversations were verbal. And this is a long distance relationship where they would see each other. Like they would fly out to see each other. So uh, right there, that's my biggest problem with her story. Uh, is that that doesn't make any sense. Uh, I need to know what's in these DMs. I need to see it. Wilbur seems really confident. She doesn't seem as confident. Um, and I'm guessing what that means, and I'm sure this will, I'm, this is what I think happens. He's going to drop some DMs now because he's been pressured, right? And it's going to really go push his side. She's going to be like, oh no, I think the biting is cute. We're going to get some shit like that. Like, I know you don't mean it when you bite me that hard or something. We're going to get some shit like that, right? And he's going to use that as justification to get out. And she's going to say, yeah, I was delusional and I didn't realize this till long after I was out of there. And then I'm going to have to come out and go, how how but it's no use getting mad over something i don't know if it's even gonna happen yet but that's my prediction of how this goes that's my prediction of where we go from here um but uh yeah huge red flag is the we don't the, i guess there's no recorded evidence of this happening like i could i i if you get bit really hard, would you not just send a picture to one of your friends going, holy shit, dude, what's his name? Bit me, bro. Wilbur bit me. And they're like, dude, you got to put Wilbur down. He's been biting you a lot recently. No, no, no. Wilbur. My boyfriend, Wilbur. Oh. Okay. And she's 30 years old, too. Yeah. There would definitely be scabbing. Like, yeah, she's getting bitten, like, constantly. So it doesn't really make any sense to me. Uh, why there'd be no evidence of this discourse happening because she's claiming this happens a lot like uh, on large portions of their conversation when they're together like, hey you gotta stop biting me does she, she like she forgets she's been bitten when she leaves she doesn't bring that up anymore she's like oh, i'm home now like i said it's usually easier for people to confront each other when they're not in, in like that like these people people like this specifically are usually prone to saying like hey i couldn't confront him in person so i just went with it but like after the fact yeah, but like in this case, it's no, it's all, she feels like she's in danger, but she only confronts him in person. doesn't really add up for me. Maybe I'm overthinking it. She heals, yeah, she has the Flash's healing factor. That's what happened. She's got the speed force. That's how she, she didn't actually pay for the flight. She just ran across, across the fucking Atlantic. 
Oh, she's got like Wolverine's healing factor. She can survive a nuke. What if they're both vampires? Maybe that's why she's a vampire. Like he's actually a vampire and he bit her. And she can't come out and say it because no one would believe her because vampires aren't real. Maybe. Am I crazy here? I don't know. Either way, his career's over. He's done. He's got to act fast. He's lost 100k in the past week. Shady. Yeah, I mean... Bro, I, I'm not sticking my neck out for that guy. He won't defend himself. And he's a fucking biter at 27 years old. I'm 27. I turned 27 a week ago. There's no fucking way I would get I, I would get away with that. There is no fucking way. I'm 27. I don't know how the fuck you would even begin to explain that to someone. How do you casually date? How do you long-term date? How do you hang out with friends? How do you go to bars? How did you survive COVID? At what age do, do I say like, hey, it's not cute that you're teething anymore. You're fucking 27 years old. Yeah. Uh, I keep forgetting that you're not in your early 30s. Oh, fuck. Do I give off that vibe? But your brain is fully developed. But he's 27! Ah! Uh, being a biter is based, Nick. What is this? Adults biting for affection. Please don't pull up any weird fetish sites when I Google this. Playfully biting during intimacy is common in many relationships. Okay, but that's not... That's intimacy. Um... Fighting during sign and arguments is a sign of aggression or lack of communication. Yeah, that's a fucking understatement. What does it mean when an adult bites? Uh, most often, biting is a sign of frustration. Okay, so that's not this, I guess. Is biting someone a love language? If you wanted to bite your partner with zero context, people might not understand there's a loving relationship there. Well, this person's being very aggressive, but in that loving relationship, context is provided. Now we understand this is affection. Why do I get the urge to bite my partner? According to a research conducted by Psychology of Sciences of Yale University, the desire to pseudo-bite or squeeze anything we find excruciatingly cute is a neurochemical reaction. As per the researchers, it's our, our brain's way of preventing us from getting too overwhelmed or distracted. Um, so maybe you should take Ritalin so you stop biting people, you fucking degenerate freak. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, let me see. Um... Because, like, yeah, okay, that's cool. So, Yell says that it's a way of showing, like, acute aggression. Um, but if you bit a fucking baby, no one would say it was cute. Like, this guy can't have kids if he bites people. I'm sorry. Like, no. Just take fucking Adderall, freak. Take fucking Vivance and stop biting people. Okay, biting a baby is weird, but, like, I'm just reading off the Yale study. If you're saying you find something cute or whatever, like, yeah, I, I mean, like, I doesn't make any fucking sense to me, dude. Like, it doesn't have to be an intimate thing, because his mom said, like, if, that's the part. I need him to deny that. I need him to deny that his mom said the biting was over. Because if, if the mom realizes it's a biting problem, it's not an intimate thing. He's biting friends and family. You know what I mean? What if he comes up, like, bro, what if you're introducing Wilbur to your niece or nephew or whatever, like a newborn baby, and Wilbur just fucking bites them? How does that work? What is the mechanics of that? Is everyone going to go, oh, he's so quirky? Aggressive nibbling. Maybe him and his mom were intimate. Yeah, I didn't really consider that one. Maybe that's the case. Maybe he's marking his territory. Yeah, literally marking. I feel like if this was a fucking girl or whatever, I don't know if they'd get away with it more or less. It doesn't make any sense to me. Five surprising facts about love bites. Deciphering the emotional symbolism, navigating consent and communication, cultural interpretations vary wildly. Health aspects of safe practices. Understanding love biting. You know what? Oh, hold on. I'm getting fucking... I'm tired. I can't read this right now. Uh, 
The term love bite often evokes a range of emotions and reactions. It's a physical mark, but its implications go much deeper, symbolizing passion, possession, and sometimes controversy. This article delves into the multifaceted nature of love bites, exploring their psychological, cultural, and social dimensions. Love bites, also known as hickeys, are usually formed... Wait, no, that's... That's not a bite, though. Hold on. No, 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 That's not what that is. That's not a bite. Nope. Sorry. Wrong one. Like, you look up biting. Look, it's the biting. All the real biting articles are, like, child care. Like, this is something that you weave out of a child when they're fucking, like, eight years old. Like, this doesn't get to 27. Oh, God, it's the bite school context. I'm reading another article here. Let's see, there's some vice. They, they're, all those people got fired, right? Good. Um... Aragon told Vice these types of expressions are highly dependent on context. If you were wanting to bite your partner with zero context, people might not understand that there's a loving relationship there or that person is being very aggressive, she said. But in that loving relationship, context is provided, and we now understand that this is a signal of affection. Cute aggressions are quite common, Aragon said. What we found in our original study was that when individuals were feeling this strong sort of adoration and then they showed the cute aggression, it helped folks to come down off of that very strong emotional experience. There was this sort of ability to help them to regulate their own emotions, Aragon said. So you're with your partner. You feel this super strong urge that you just need to express. And then you do the bite and it helps you to cleanse yourself and cope with those feelings. This kind of aggression is pretty normal too. This is quite common and numbers are quite high within the 50, 60% range, Aragon tells me. Though her research was not directly on biting romantic partners, which would be very, very niche, she tells me that she's found that the general umbrella term of cute aggression can explain a range of behaviors, and similar phenomena can be explained by it. Can't wait to whack out those quotes the next- Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, okay, hold on, wait, that was actually part of the article. Okay, I'm sorry, no, that wasn't weird. That was- I just cut off the article at a weird point. Um... Can't wait to whack out those quotes the next time my partner denies me biting privileges. Bite away, boys. Oh. Yeah, I think this is weird, and I think people who do it are weird, and I think we should discriminate against them. I'm kink-shaming, and I'm life-shaming. I think you're a freak if you do it. And I think you're, like, an undateable husk. Like, there's no, there's no way, bro. Ugh. No. No shot. I don't believe it. All right, guys, um, we are at the four and a half hour mark. I got a lot of editing ahead of me to make this watchable. <laughs> uh, will you ever get the Vega edit from the Hassan video? Yes, yes, you will. Um, play the Vega edit. I can't play it right now, but thank you for the membership. Appreciate it, Half-Mast. Uh, Teddy, dude, uh, to Tipster says he defended Lolly 30 times in the past few weeks, but he's now going to therapy. Thank you, Teddy. Um, Wookie Z to Australian. I went to therapy. got zero stars now. Biker, what are the songs used in the Mom Max video? Okay, so I think we thoroughly went through that one. That was uh, probably the most, that was probably the best response I ever gave to $2 in my life. All right. Um, GG, love the discussion. I hope you did. I'm sorry if I, like, I, I don't think I had the same uh, thing as a lot of my, um, I don't know, community mates or whatever. I think they were much more aggressive than me on this one, and maybe that'll pay off. Who knows? But I don't really see any cause for pushing further than we already have I, I, there's not really anything here to work with on either side of this drama so i'm gonna fence it both sides on it until i see more and then i'll come to like an actual point but we're way too early for me to say shit here um so for right now i guess that's my feet on the pavement and that's my dick in your main bitch true okay. Which foreskin the way i cropped it that's my feet on the pavement that's my dick in your main bitch Keffel's moaning loud. Ask me how the fuck my cock fit. Shove it way I popped it. 
I'm gonna start a mosh pit, Tippy, on some bullshit. He acting so obnoxious, she said. Post a photo, so I took a hot pick and did it like a Jewish foreskin, the way I cropped it. That's my feet on the pavement. That's my dick in your main bitch.